Hello and welcome to The Last Word on Spurs. We hope you're keeping very, very safe and well. This will only apply to our watching audience. Sorry for the slight delay there. Listen, hard off getting the originals together, let alone anyone else for this amazing crew. Thank you so much, as always, for joining us on The Last Word on Spurs. We're here, as promised, through pre-season. As Danny says, late word on Spurs. But Danny, we're here. That's the main thing. If you're listening to us for the first time, and where have you been for the last five, six, seven years? We're on iTunes, we're on Spotify, we're across all major audio platforms. We're, of course, on Twitter, at Last Word on Spurs. We're on Facebook and Instagram, too. And here we are, joined by a lot of the originals that make up the Last Word on Spurs, taking us into pre-season, of course, and ahead of the new season to come. Let's bring on the boys, making up tonight's wonderful panel. Joining me, top right, in a location that I want to coming far from you we've got the wonderful lee mcqueen look at that background it's gardener's world episode four lee how are you spanish style mate spanish style yeah <laughs> very very good um i'm over i've smuggled in uh in spain don't tell anyone i've smuggled in a few uh gamma rays from the uh for, from, from my house at uh, home because i drove over last week so uh one of the gammas tonight happy days but yeah no really good uh really good enjoying the weather and um yeah really looking forward to getting into some of the spurs chat because I'm absolutely buzzing. I think uh, Kane looks, well, we're going to get into it, but he looks very, very sharp. And that only means one good thing for, for Tottenham is going to go and win the Golden Boat. So let's get into that, Rick. But yeah, all good, mate. Fantastic. And joining him, of course, listen, uh, crossing over again to another Spanish correspondent. I'm not going to do the accent. I've got the wonderful Mr. Richard Cracknell in the house. Rich, how are you? Hello, Ricky. Que tal? Tipicamente tarde. <laughs> Which is typically late because fifty percent of the show is Spanish. This is why we started late. You say like eight o'clock means like half past eight, quarter to nine, like when you're in Spain. Isn't that right, Lee? You know. So uh, yeah, all good, all good. And um, Rick, last time I flew back from the uh, from the UK, I put a few cans in my uh, hold case of the uh, of the Beaver Town. I couldn't do without any Beaver Town. So. Uh, Lee, I'm with you, and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. And uh, another another great result yesterday. Another yeah. assured of uh, performance. So, uh, but listen, uh, one thing I've got to say before we even start, our lab was Spurs yesterday at Ibrox. All, oh. the, all everybody that went yeah, up yeah. there was it absolutely. It's a preseason friendly. I mean, that's how excited everybody's got about Spurs. Everybody's gone up to Glasgow, which is a fine city, by the way, for a for a night out, but it was off the scale, absolutely yeah. off the scale. And uh, there's something massive, uh, massive coming down. Anyway, let me let me pass you over to the man that's not in a garden tonight. <laughs> it's so <laughs> frustrating. The, the one that you wanted to be in garden as well, that he's not in garden as well. He was in Bromley for us midweek, though. Jason McGovern. Jason, how are you? Lovely to have you back on. You well? Yeah, not too bad. I'm on the, the golden fluids as well, but I must be honest, it's a Thai beverage. I'm not having that neck oil <laughs> stuff. So oh. I apologise. I apologise to our hosts at, uh, at Beaver Town, but it's a Thai beer for me always, mate. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll find Jace back in Beaver Town corner pin as soon as I open that for the Southampton game. And again, a quick shout out, of course, to our sponsors of the show, Beaver Town. That's the Beaver Town corner pin. You can find, of course, bang opposite our South Stand at that Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. We are very excited to be get, getting back there for some amazing screenings of those away games. We know Frankie Major was down there for Anfield. I think a few of us boys got down there as well. I think City away, was it potentially? Some of us were down there for a lot more to come next season. Champions League, nice to come. Cracks will be flying back over for them. I'm sure he will be. You know that. You know that. And excitement of what is to come. And it's so bizarre because at the moment, Spurs song sheets flying off the music. McQueen also trying to get some more songs pumping in there. We saw Lee, I think, giving a little tip towards a Romero song there earlier in the week. Um, they'll have that giant telly in the garden, of course, at Beaver Town. They'll have the pre-match DJ playing their favourite songs. You might get a song or two from Jason, depending on how the result is going, if he chooses to watch it in Beaver Town. Uh, but um, like I say, they're currently covering off all the Euros, the Lionesses. And again, make sure you head down there. Great food. Great chat, great people, beavertown.co.uk, beavertownbrewery.co.uk. But Spurs at the moment, taking pre-season by storm. And I'm always cautious to say about pre-season because, boys, you remember, I mean, under one day Ramos, we uh, I think we won six in a row in pre-season, absolutely thumped Roma, I think 5-1 at the lane. And it obviously then, of course, led to Spurs having two points from eight games, which led to, obviously, the wonderful Harry Redknapp coming in. So uh, cautious that we shouldn't go too overboard in pre-season. But, Lee, to start with you... Despite going a goal down yesterday in that first other Ibrox Spurs, 
emerging 2-1 winners, which means that we've already got our first trophy of the season and the winners of the inaugural Walter Toll Memorial Cup came scoring both, Sonny assisting them as well. Lee, how excited are you by the season to come and just pre-season at the moment? We are flying. Well, I hope that stat about Juan de Ramos and the six is uh, is the same for the Arsenal because they think they're going to win the league based on their pre-season. So uh, it'll be quite, quite interesting to get into some of that. Um, yeah, no, I'm really impressed. Um, I think that, that pre-season for me is all about having a look, seeing where they are, fitness. I know, you know, you can throw out all the old cliches about, uh, you know, getting stuff in your legs and all that sort of stuff. But it is true. And, you know, yesterday he had an absolute plan, not necessarily a game plan. He had a plan to say, these players are going to play these minutes and I'm going to put these players on for these minutes. And regardless of what was happening, 3-0, 6-0, 1-0, 4-0, whatever, he was going to do that. And that's really important. So that's why you can't really take the results per se into into, uh, into account. What you can take into account, in my opinion, is the, is the performances, the patterns of play, the tactical, the playbook, as we're calling it. Um, yes, the blue book has travelled with me to Spain. Of course it has. Um, but I think Antonio Conte's book is is the playbook. So that tactical Conte ball, the pat patterns of play, regardless of who's in them positions, um, you know, so you've got Sessignon in and then you've got Perisic in or you've got Longley in, you know, all, all of them sorts of changes. That's the bit that, that for me is, is really um, good to see. And then, of course, on top of that, you've got Kane, Doing cane things, which is which is absolutely fantastic. So yeah, really, 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 um, really impressed. Yeah, I'm also conscious. I mean, people come back to me saying, "Taking it by storm." Am I going too early? Probably. I mean, in terms of the results, uh, we are doing really well. I know performances. It's only early. And just for some context, before I come out of Jay, Watertoll was the first player of mixed race to play football at both Tottenham and Rangers. And that trophy was presented to former Spurs and Rangers star Jermaine Defoe before kickoff. Just to give some context to that. But Jay's coming over to you. Uh, it's Fraser Forster, Eve Basuma, Jed Spence, Ivan Perisic, Clement Long. They all getting their first minutes for Spurs. Um, on a day where we saw the England captain striking twice inside six minutes. It's five goals for him in pre-season already. Um, what do you make, Dave, of the overall form and that performance up at Ibrox? I thought other than maybe um, 15 minutes in the first half, we were much the better side. I thought the 2-1 flattered them. We had, what? Kulazewski and Royal both wasted good shooting chances. Kane was through one on one. Oiberg was through one on one. Paris uh, Sessignon was through one on one. You know, we opened them up uh, quite comfortably through the game. And it was, like I say, just that little spell where they scored, where they looked on top. But other than that, it was a very good performance. And, um, and how brilliant to see Rangers, you know, for an England captain to go to Scotland, take some stick at the start of the game, but leave to a standing ovation. I think that tells you how well England's captain must have played. And uh, Absolutely. I'm, just yep. I'm just consulting my uh, my blue book, Lee. <laughs> it says he's got, he's got five goals in pre-season. <laughs> Mine's a little white book. Oh, my God. <laughs> so we're not even at the season yet. I tell you what, this is where we should do the best. We are looking to do a compilation of the best bits of this show. But my God, to fit it all in. I don't know where we'll be. Jason McGovern on song there with a little bit of a laugh down last one on Spurs. Only eight minutes in. Cracks has come around to you. What I thought was interesting is uh, mm. Giovan Broncos side. The Spurs have been their only defeat so far pre-season. What you want to make into that? He, after the game, said, I'm really happy because we played against a lot of a good opposition in Spurs. At West Ham in the week, which they won. Now Tottenham are a top four side. And you can see the quality they have on the pitch. Which I know it's early. I know maybe I shouldn't go too mm. overboard with it because it's pre-season. But... Uh, are you encouraged by what you're seeing so far? Oh, well, Rick, let me just rewind you a little bit and a little bit about Walter Toll. Um, I've never said to my kids, have footballers as heroes, OK? Uh, go and find other people because football is football. It has its place. We love it, but they're not heroes. However, my oldest son, as you know, is William Nicholson Cracknell after Bill Nicholson because he transcended, uh, transcended football. He was, I mean, he, just an incredible amount of time at the club, um, you know, just just, just as a person, you know. I, I liked the vibe of the man. My youngest son is Thomas Alfred Walter Cracknell, after Walter Toll, because wow. of what he'd done. Not in football, but as a war hero and everything. So if you don't know your Walter Toll story, please, please, please go and, even if you go to Wikipedia, 
go and read a little bit about Walter Toll and what he'd done and what he was and what he stood for as a person. Incredible. So, uh, yeah, so I even named my youngest son after Walter um, and really, really, really great person. So, yeah, it's um, yesterday. Um, what's the question, Rick? I've, got, I've gone right off. Are you, right are, you, are you encouraged by the start so far? <laughs> I've gone right off on one about Walter Toll and I. You don't uh, do that, never. <laughs> Um, do you know what? In football, Rick, sometimes there is um, things that you can't quite put into words, put into context. And like the way that we were playing yesterday, did you, even when we went 1 0 down, did you ever think that we were going to lose that game? No. There was this assurance. Mm. It's almost, yeah. uh, like, lit- there's literally no words, but. I kind of put it back to when, do you remember when Man U were winning everything and then Arsenal was the team winning everything? There was this assurance, this air around the team where you looked at them and you went, oh man, alive. There's there's just this thing around them, this X factor. They look assured. They look composed. They look like they're the governors. Even though they've gone 1-0 down, you you just know that there's something going on in that team and you go, well, OK, it's 1-0 to the other side, but this ain't ending 1-0. And Tottenham, for the first time in so many years, are beginning to build that vibe around them. It's all like, like a vibe. You can't put it into words, you can't describe it, but you get this air around somebody and you go, OK, yeah, we look so assured here. We look like at any one time... We yeah. can go wallop, third gear to fourth gear, and we're going to absolutely tear you to pieces. And that is what Conte and Tottenham are currently building. It just seems to be that air of assurance around Tottenham at the moment. Um, yeah. yeah, King Oddle's right. We, I think we had that at, at peak potch, but only, but not to the same degree. There was that little air, but this seems like established. It seems like it runs through every player. It seems to be running through the whole club. Because I remember like maybe a year ago, Rick, we just said everybody has to be to the same level as Conte. You know, you have to be that world-class, assured, this is what's happening, um, type of football club and player and a person working within the club. And it just seems the whole thing is building into this huge... Um, honestly, Rick, I, it's hard to find the words. It's just that vibe around us as we play now. But yeah, it's 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 really exciting and it's so great to see. I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. Yesterday, 1-0 one, one done and I was like, well, and? So, so what? And all of a sudden, Kane pops up and does what he does and it's like, there you go. See you later. It's mm. like second yeah. gear. Way you go. And they couldn't live with us. They they could not live with us. Man, that Man United team, that Arsenal team, Liverpool teams of the past. There's that feeling of like I, I, I bet you this season coming, Rick, we're going to go to a lot of teams away and home, and people are go. Oh, I don't fancy this today. If you can, if you can go to team like home and away. And players on the opposite team go, don't fancy playing this lot today. Mm. That's it. I, I think you can start doing bits with it. So, uh, yeah, there's that lovely assurance beginning to build there that I've not seen for many, many years. Mm. Do you know, I mean, it was interesting. I think Eric Dyer said this on yesterday's uh, post-match interview. Leah, have you called it? He said that, I think he said for the first time, he's seen a different mentality around Spurs. The fact that they're bringing in players early. There's just like a different air of confidence around the group at the start of the season that even he's never seen. He's been at Spurs for the last six, seven, eight seasons now. Or oh, maybe I've got a bit overboard there, but the last six or seven. Are, do, do you feel that, Lee, as well, that there is that different air of confidence without wanting to go too extreme? Because again, I do appreciate some of the comments. You know, we have to, again, remind us of it. It's only pre-season. Lots can change in pre-season. But do you get that vibe of confidence as well at the moment, Lee? Yeah, completely. Uh, I think Quackers is spot on with that. I mean, I think that, you know, Liverpool, I make the comparison all the time. I've got the stats in the blue book, which, you know, I might not roll out yet. I'll, I'll maybe forget an opportunity later on to do it. But, you know, in their turnaround, when, when they signed Virgil van Dijk in that January, and then they signed Alisson and Naby Keita and um, 
uh, Fabinho, um, Origi, that summer that they signed all them players, they had a 22-point swing. Uh, they finished 75 points and then they and then they had end up with 97 points the next season. It can happen. It does happen. And and I think that the the, the belief that we have in in Conte is a, obviously a massive part of that jigsaw. What he's done, and it's not even been a year, in seven months, what he's done is is transforming the mindset. That, that's the biggest thing. I, I don't think we've ha- ever really had bad players. I think we've just had players that don't have the right mindset or the right mentality. We've got talent in the squad, right? Do you know what I mean? Even the likes of people that can't get in the team, they're still talented footballers. It's just bringing that all together and the missing pieces. And, and he's, he's and King Oldham mentioned it earlier, prime potch we had that, where you'd go into a game knowing that you'd win. And and that was so alien to Tottenham. So alien for us, because normally you're going into a game thinking, yeah, you know, ho- hopefully we'll win. But under prime potch, we were going into games, that, that final season of White Island, 16-17 season, where we the total charge, ironically, against... Chelsea's uh, Conte Chelsea um you're going into games thinking we're going to win today we're going to win today and 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 you feel that now you you feel that I don't I don't feel like that we're we're going to lose games even though I mean the the thing that I've been most impressed with and, and this is probably so stupid so forgive me but the thing I've been most impressed with is the tight ball control and getting out of situations where in the past and I'm still I'm sure there's still proper squeaky bum time with a lot of fans but in the past people would be like don't try that don't do that oh my god oh my god but it's bang 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 like and, and it comes and all of a sudden we're then on the attack they that is the patterns of play that i've been so impressed with and i'm mega excited like and and people say don't go overboard no that that's me i am totally going overboard and i'm really really excited if you can't get excited about yeah, yeah. spending yeah. what two grand a season Plus all the stuff that we do with a show and all the time I put in Tottenham and what my family mm. go out. If I can't get excited about it, what's the point? Mm. And I am Absolutely. I am bloody excited. Yep. And why shouldn't we be? Like I say, we're in a really good place. Uh, Jay's coming out of you just to kind of touch up on the lineup. And again, uh, these shows we they, we say they won't be uh, in depth, but they end up still being two hours. But I promise, consciously for family time, uh, we'll see darts how we get on. Nine. Darts at darts nine. At you heard it. Darts at nine. You heard it there first. Starts at nine, drinks at 10, quiz at 11. Don't panic, everybody. Don't panic. Uh, t- Jason, it's quite funny because, I mean, Conte named a fairly familiar starting lineup, even though I think many people were expecting to have a number of changes. Uh, Damon Agersberg says, anyone concerned by the lack of playing time for the new sign? And Conte wanted them in early. Is he just keeping his powder dry? That's from Aggers74. What thoughts on that? Well, I think in fairness to the new boys, Longley and Spence have only just come in. We soon have got the COVID or we would have seen him in Korea, wouldn't we? Um, Richarlison we have seen so I think uh, it's, it's just circumstances has meant you know that, that they've they've had to start late um, I, probably a little bit unlike the other two I, I see a lot of good things in Tottenham at the moment but for me go to Chelsea on match day two and instead of talking the talk let's go and walk the walk and let's go there and show Chelsea what we're capable of they look in a mess all the talk is on Tottenham it's time to show it. You can't just can't just do all the talking. At some stage, you've got to go and, and actually perform when the pressure is really on you. And um, that match day two will tell me a lot about where where this Tottenham is, regardless of the eleven players that take the pitch, regardless of the the five players that come on. Have we got the personality to go to Chelsea? At the moment, we think we have, but yeah. we'll only know that at kickoff time. When, when we know that Chelsea, whatever their message will be up for it, can we do it? And if we do it on match day two and we show that we've got the personality, then I'll start to think, yep, yeah, maybe there's a change. But we need to, to show it on match day two. I want to see it rather than just talk it. I think do you remember, just quickly, oh, sorry, I was, yeah, I was going to say, just, just come on. Do you, do you remember at Wembley when Son ripped? Um, yeah. Chelsea apart. I think we won three yeah. 0 didn't we? Uh, that, yeah. that game, and, he, and it's that sort of thing that you're talking about. I, I completely agree with you. They better win as well because it's my birthday, so they I mean, better bloody win. <laughs> to a degree, Lee, as to a degree, Lee, as well. The um, the famous battle of the bridge game. We can talk about how it ended, but you saw a Tottenham side with personality, and, and it obviously it went went off off the rock at the end. But to to have that personality, go there and be two 0 up that night against Chelsea and show that, I tell you what, we're coming here to do you. 
and um, and then it descended into a farce. But mm. we were two 0 up that night, and so I want to see us in that respect go there and say, right, come on then, we're we're looking forward to playing at Stamford Bridge, not not just you know being tormented by the place. Yeah. Jace, Rick, if I can just interject now, that that night the Battle of the Bridge, what what we failed to do, and this always winds me. I I, I love what we went and done, but it was never it wasn't controlled. We lost, lost control lost that lost night. Lost yeah, we lost our heads, and then when we lost our heads, we gave away them two goals that that, that we got. So you've got to capture that spirit of what we had that night. But with that control of yeah. when it does get to that boiling point, you let the opposition player lose his head and you don't. And I think yeah. that's what Conte's uh, got. I absolutely. think he has got yeah, it. I totally agree. Uh, yeah, Jan, totally Jan agree. said earlier on the, on the comments, numinous, that, that, that spirit of divinity, that, that are almost like you're entitled to it. So you go there and then you go and like literally go and take the pee. And when they react, you just go, well, yeah. carry on, go on, where you go, you go and get booked. But mm. look, look, we, we just went that little bit f- too far that night. You've just got yeah. to yeah. take it to that rim, to that edge, yeah. and then pull back. But that's not been to disrespectful rim. to Poch saying this. I, I, do, <laughs> I do honestly think, though, Conte and Poch, this is the difference. I think you're seeing that, you know, no offence to Poch, he was a great manager for the club, done well. But I do think Conte is just that next level. I think that's a, there is that wide, such excitement around the club league. You see what I'm coming from? I do genuinely yeah, feel I, that there is a more controlled way that Conte would approach yeah, games I, like the Champions League. I, I, I totally, I know what you're saying, but you, you, everyone's got to remember as well, and this, this is not a potch loving as well, though I absolutely love him. Um, it's, it's about, you know, we went to Stanford Bridge under Pochettino and won there for the first time in about 4,000 years. Like, you know, we, we, we never, ever won at Old Trafford and then under Poch we did. You know, this is, this is, he, he had some massive milestones. And if you look at the wider picture, rather than just the granular, the here and now, look at the wider picture and go back to Liverpool, go and have a look at their journey. Uh, everybody batters us over the head, which is quite boring now. I don't, don't even bother any of us, but everyone batters over the head with we won trophies, we won trophies. We won like 28 or whatever we've won, but people don't realise that because they just play FIFA since they were like 10. But but the point the point is is that you know we we haven't won a trophy for a long period of time. People batter us over the head on that. But we Liverpool, Chelsea, they hadn't won the league for thirty years. Like Chelsea hadn't won the league for fifty odd years. You know it, it, these these big clubs that you're looking at now and going oh these are massive clubs. Manchester United, by the way, Manchester United haven't won the league for ten years. Arsenal haven't won the Premier League for what since two thousand four, eighteen years. I mean, so, so we get battered over the head. The point I'm trying to make is that we had our journey has be, had to be, our learning, our journey had to be under Poch, getting battered, then making some little milestones, some wins, you know, having some um, Champions League final and having some you know uh, challenges for the title, all that sort of stuff. It's brought us to the moment that we're in today. Does that make sense? Well, I've had yeah. getting to kind of whatever, but that's yeah. it's the same with Liverpool. Liverpool cycle under Brendan Rodgers, they mm. nearly won a title. Gerard slipped, they didn't win it. Then they then they brought in Klopp, their story, and then Klopp had to take two, three years, had to rebuild the squad. Bring, we've gone through that rebuild, this painful rebuild, the potch, the famous interview. It's happened. Mm. Have a look at the squad today. Have a not the team, the squad. The squad. The squad. It's yeah. completely different. Yeah. It's complete, and and we're operating completely differently. So you know, and now we've got this guy at the at the helm who who who's won. What was it? You said this the other day. Five out uh, the last five seven titles times, five, out of the last seven last or seven last seven eight seasons. seasons. Yeah. Seven yeah. and a half seasons or whatever it might. Because obviously, you know, we had a half a season with us. So you've got to look at that and say, you know. Manchester United, you know, uh, uh, Chelsea, Man City, you know, Liverpool. I know these, 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 the previous two, like Liverpool City, they're, they're far, far away from us, but we've got so much to catch up on. Whereas they've only got fine margins. How can we get better? How can we get 97 points rather than 96? Whereas we've got, how can we get 90 points rather than 71? And that, that and that's a huge element element that we can improve. And by making the signings and, and playing the way that we're playing and with contact at home, I think I think that we can really close that gap. And that's where we need to be. 
Mm, agree. Uh, Rich, come over to you. Are you worried, Rich, at the moment? Because in terms of, we'll come on to the lineup in a second, but uh, players mm. that remain back at Hotspur Way, uh, and Dombele, Lacelso, Regulon, Winks. I mean, those quartet, we've known that Conte have said that they can find moves elsewhere. Um, and then when you look at the, like I say, we've got that quartet there. We've got, at the moment for Spurs, Ben Davis missing out with an ankle injury that could potentially rule him out of the start of the season. And Skip as well, um, unfortunately, has got a minor injury, not associated with what we understand with the pelvic problem he had. Um, by those four being around, Rich, is that still a problem? Regulon and Dombele, the Celso, I mean, would you like them to go and get moves in Dombele? Does that make a difference at the moment? The fact that we're isolating them, is that the best way to move forward at the moment, do you reckon? I've, you just have to be ruthless, Rick. Uh, Dombele, he's got it in his locker and he's not delivering it. It is there. So down, down to you, Tangai. Do you want to come in one day and go, hallelujah, I've had a change of heart. I really want to put it in. And we know he's got it in his locker. I was funny enough, yesterday I was watching with my youngest son the goal mm. he scored against Sheffield United. That stupid goal. flick yep. that yep. he'd done. Like, it, you, you can't score goals like that. It's, it's, it's illegal. It's like, it's just like, it's just ridiculous. He's got that in his locker. So, like, go to bed tonight. Have an epiphany and come and come into training tomorrow and mm. come and do it. Because if he does, there's your answer. There's yeah. there's your cam that we've been looking for. But it's all down to him. Uh, but all the time that he doesn't want to do that, Rick, see you later. Go and train with the kids. Mm. I feel a little bit sorry for Winks. Like like Jason always says, and I, and I nearly mention this every show. <laughs> first, you get rid of the unwilling. Then yep. you get rid of the unable. And mm. Winks just isn't up to up to the level. Um, you know, this preseason, people are beginning to expose themselves in that team and that squad of those that cannot do it, yep. but are not up to Conte's level, but are not up to this new level that he's created by bringing in new players and established players that have actually stepped up with him. So they they will expose themselves. So those four, um, you know, Regulon, another one. I think he wants to. He wants to maybe play like be, be at Spurs, be a wing back, but he's just not got enough in his locker. Yeah. So they will expose themselves. The weaknesses will expose themselves. We see it. So somebody like Paratici and Conte definitely see it. So we we, we will learn learn a lot from them. If they get frozen out. Listen, it's it's a lot of money. Lo Celso's another one. It's nearly hundred million pounds between those two players. Just a lot. Uh, yep. Yeah. Rick, what does money matter now in football? We're seeing what goes on at Barcelona. You just mm. like you know, if you if you drop a hundred million pounds and it doesn't work, guess what? Next season there's another bucket load of money coming in advertising, in naming rights, in pre-season tours in TV money. So you mm. just you just go, oh, okay, look, wipe your mouth of it, let him go for nothing, finish his contract, and away we go again. Because that, that's 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 the way football football is now. So those four, I don't know, they're they're just not yeah. gonna be around that first team, are they? It's no. we'll just we'll just bring replacements in. And that's just the nature of football now. But yeah. a few years ago it was very, very different. Now Oh, okay. You know, I, I, you know, I was walking down the street and I dropped a tenner out of my pocket. Fair dues. Listen, I get paid again in two days' time. You know, so at my days, I've got another two hundred quid in my pocket from like you know a day's pay or something. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Th those players. Who's even talking about them? Now? No, that's it. No, I mean, I say it's only. I mean, Be that's the thing. Before the moment, this all happened with Conte yeah. and this revolution that seems to be now coming. Everybody mm. was screaming blue murder on social media, wasn't they? This is a disgrace. He's a disgrace. He was 65 million quid. He should be doing this. I've not seen his name mentioned. He's like he's completely been forgotten because he's just been blown out of the water. Yeah. He's it, it, it's it's just it's just gone. So uh yeah, those players, let's hope they find new clubs, especially mm. Winks and especially Regulon, those yeah. two especially. I hope they go and find clubs that they're very happy with and have good careers. The other two, La Kelso and Undembele, I 
don't much care. Mm. See you later, Ted. I'll go and play with the stiffs or go and like join a club. Go go to the Middle East, they'll pay you a bucket load of money. That's all you seem interested in. Mm. I mean, I'd wonder, Jay, to come over to you. I mean, that, that lineup read ahead of the game at Luis Romero, Dyer, Sanchez, Royale, Hoybier, Benson, Kiosa, Sessignon, Kulisevsky, Kane, and Son. And the subs were Forster, Austin, Spence, Doherty, Tanganga, Roden, Longley, Perisic, Saab, Basuma, Hill, Lucas, Rashad. And as I read that out, and like Lisa's earlier, we have literally done this rebuild, haven't we? I mean, it, it does feel that now there's a completely different squad that's there now before the eyes of what Pochettino had towards the end. I just wonder, Jace, um, as I kind of refer to the point where I said to Lee that I wonder, do you think Conte may be sending out a message to everyone that, you know, essentially you have to prove to him why you should be in the strongest 11? Because I think yesterday there was a little bit of surprise on social media that we did pick um, pretty much a familiar lineup bar a couple there that were the team that contributed to Spurs to get into the Champions League? Yeah, I think I think part of that, as I say, the, the, availability, the availability of some of the new players has delayed things. As Conte said, you know, limited training sessions with the team for Spence, limited with, um, with Bissouma, limited with Longley. Uh, I would expect the starting lineup against Roma to be uh, a better indication of that lineup against Southampton. I think the, the right wing back slot is the one that we're all looking at. I think all surprised that um, all surprised that Emerson started rather than Spence. All surprised that then Lucas Mora came on in front of Spence and, and Doherty as a sub. Totally so that's agree. that's yeah. that's the one position that we're looking at. Probably thinking strange one. Davinson Sanchez obviously playing as the left sided centre back, but Ben Davis isn't fit, and Longley, as I said, is is just coming in. So. You know, it may well be that Longley will get his. I, I think Conte will try and get big minutes into those players' legs in that in that last uh, friendly with Roma, anyway. But um, you know, the the right wing back is the one place where it's we, we seem now to have four options because he's he. You know, I, I think he's genuinely considering having Lucas Moura as playing that role. That that looks like the way it's to be. Although he, he quickly very he very quickly moved him again in that second half, didn't he? When the, the next string of subs came on and Spence came on, so yeah, be interesting to see with that, and it will be interesting to see who the left sided centre back is on that that kick off with Southampton. Other than that, I, I, I still think Perisic will probably start that game over over Sessignon, providing he's he's got some genuine fitness time under his belt as well. Yeah, we will come on to Seton Young because um, conscious that... Again, Richard, not... Don't forget Richarlison as well. He's suspended on the opening day, isn't Yeah, he? very good. That's so good we know point. that front three will be Son, Son Kane and, um, Kulisevsky. and Kulisevsky anyway. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I, I do want to dedicate a section of the show to that wing-back area because it does still feel, I mean, listen, bar Perisic, that um, there's some real unsurety about the right-hand side and how Spurs are going to operate. Again, you refer to the fact, Jace, that again, we've seen Lucas Mora. Um, again, being deployed there. It seems that Conte is looking to maybe have that as his role for the season. We will see. But what we will just do is we will just quickly go for our first break of the show. Um, for our listeners that are on audio, take you into that break. You're going to hear from Antonio Conte, who gives you his thoughts um, on Spurs' win up at Ibrox yesterday. And we're going to turn our attention to some of the main points of that game yesterday. And yeah, talking about really, as we've discussed, that wing-back area, how Spurs are going to line up, that central midfield battle, what they're going to do. Um, and as Jason referred to the fact there that we know first game of the season, really, you'd be surprised if it wasn't Kulisane, uh, Kulisane, Kulisane, uh, Kulisane, Kulisevsky, Son and Kane. I've tried to go for the free there. I You're the only one not drinking, Rick. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I need to start the way this is going, I tell you. Um, I do want to talk about the opening goal, though, Cracks. Let's come over to you, because um, I saw Session getting some stick for it on social media. Again, it's pre-season. Don't want to think about too much into it. But, uh, I mean, Ray just took a lead. And Spurs, to be fair, in that first half, Rich, don't you feel Spurs are really dominant. I think they were really unlucky to go behind mm. at half-time. I mean, they led everything mm -hmm. bar, the, um, bar, the, bar the goal. I mean, the stats were, were outrageous, really. But, um, yeah, Matondo, he got past Session really. I didn't feel he dealt with him quite wise on the night um, or on the day, but a low cross inside the box and Collick stabbed it home. But the goal was really a run against play, wasn't it, Rich? It was really against the run of play because Spurs were really dominant in that opening 25, 30 minutes of the game. Yeah, massively. It felt like a bit of a sucker punch, didn't it? You know, even when 
Tyson fought Bruno, and I love Frank Bruno to to to, to bits. I've worked with him a few times, but Frank caught uh, Mike Tyson in that famous fight back mm. in the late eighties, yeah. and uh, and Harry Carpenter fought. Get in there, Frank, didn't he? Get in there, Frank. And it felt like that moment, didn't it? They they sort of landed one on our chin. It's it's going to happen. We're not going to go through the season not conceding an odd goal. And we're not going to go through the season without losing a game. It just it just doesn't happen. So um, it was completely against the run of play. But you kind of you get that feeling that Tottenham of old would have maybe lost their heads a bit. But they just went, no, OK, carry on doing what you're doing and and, and we'll get one. And then obviously Kane popped up, but yeah, it was completely against the runner runner play. That's mm. that's always been a worry of mine. We could sometimes I've seen Tottenham down the years win three or four games, and you think to yourself, "Oh yeah, happy days." You know, we've won last three or last four. But you watch us playing, you go to the games, you watch us, and you go, "We're not really playing that great," to be honest. Um, and it's a worry because you think at some stage someone's going to absolutely give us a collar in there because we're not playing good. And then other times we can lose a couple of games, draw a couple of games. You go, oh, OK, look, it's going to come because yep. we are playing really, really well here. And when it clicks, we'll give somebody a bit of a cuff in and, and, then, and then we'll be off. So sometimes results are, are very, very misleading. I know it's a results game, but they are yeah. misleading. So yeah, that first goal, when it went in, on, like I said at the start of the show, Rick, it was like, well, OK, <laughs> just watch, just wait, and yeah, something then... somewhere will come along. Yeah. And that and that comes in the shape of Kane, doesn't it? But just yeah. absolutely, like... Blew it away, but Cess, I, li- I like Cessignon. I, I do, I do really like him. It's the same as the the other side with Emerson and Mora playing in his position at the moment. Coming on, nothing like giving somebody a kick up the derriere if you've got somebody that doesn't actually play your position, and you're getting the shepherd's crook taken off. And somebody from midfield comes in and plays your position. So yeah. I, I'm kind of thinking that Conte might be giving Emerson a bit of a G up, saying, well, look, you're supposed to be the wing back here. Mm. And yet I'm playing somebody that's being adapted to a wing back to play your position. So, like, you know, go away and think about that because you're you're gonna you're gonna be out. If I'm going to play a, a converted midfielder into your position, you need to get into training maybe an hour early and you need to start putting in some hard yards because, like, I'll bomb you out and I'll put I'll put uh, Lucas in there instead. So I, I think a lot of the time, the training, the games and everything is, is for the benefit of the players up here. Not in their Mentally. legs. We said yeah, this yeah, the last show. Great. Mentally. I yeah. think he's keeping a fire. I think he's putting a fire under every player that needs a fire putting under him and saying, you better be like right on your game in mm. training and in games. Because if you're not, see you later. You're yeah. out the door. And I think that's what keeps every winning team and proper team that goes on to win cups and leagues. I think that is, it's fear, Rick. It's almost like like ruling by fear. And I think that I think that might be what Conte's doing in in those positions at the moment. I've got to say, Lee, bringing you in, it's really interesting because um, you know, listen, we said that was a weird first half for Tottenham because they were somehow losing the game when it showed really good energy in terms of going forward on the tempo and then some really great counter attacks. And then half time came along, we saw Basuma replacing Benton Core um, for his Spurs debut, and then we saw Lucas Mora in place of Emerson. But before we do go to that. Um, I just want to address this free kick situation, which I know is probably still driving us all mad. So first half, Kane stood over the free kick um, and then somehow contributed and smashing it straight in Dyer's face. Now, um, when does this actually stop? I mean, <laughs> What's I, think up with Billy, I think Billy T put it on Twitter so appropriately. You know, we, we've, we've hired an Italian specialist 
I think was it over three thousand six hundred and seventy-five. <laughs> it's Facebook's bigger than anything. It? It's right. Rick, encyclopedia. Of Rick, 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 even Kulusevski in an interview was taking the pee of Kane taking the free kicks. Oh, no. We're seeing it. The team's seeing it. Carry on, Lee. Sorry. Go I just don't understand. We've we've spent. Well, I say spent. We've got this guy in that's got this dossier. Lee's blue book version of these free kicks, and we're still doing exactly <laughs> the same thing. And the same player is still on them and smashing into the geezer's face. Lee, can you understand that? <laughs> it was in Dyer's face as well, wasn't it? Bless him. Straight um, in his face. Can I understand it? The thing is, look, I can't understand it in the sense of like why he's still taking free kicks. When you see Sonny taking free kicks in, you know, for South Korea and he's pinging them in, the, in top bins, left top bins, right, whatever. Or you see Dyer, uh, you know, taking free kicks in the past. You know, he's got a, a good whip on it. And literally every time Kane takes a free kick, he, he it's the wall. It's, it's just a nightmare. Even he scored by the other day at the wall when it was a massive deflection, the one against Villa we all know about. But, but what I would say is Kane... Proved in the I know we got to the second half yet, but you proved in the second half that he can hit. It, I mean, he's unbelievable. The bloke is unbelievable. So why can't he take free kicks? It's almost like we need the ball to be moving for his free kick so he can hit it. Because that second goal, the the, the goal that he scored in the second half, sorry, when he's oh, just yes. sizing up the bloke, sizing up the bloke, sizing up the bloke, yeah. went right, bang, yeah. ping. That's what he needs to do on the free kicks, bless him, to, to, to be fair. I have got the blue book quickly. You're talking about the stats here. I mean, they had total shots on target 10. Uh, sorry, total shots 10, only two on target. To our total shots 17, we had seven on target. And I think, you know, um, the, the veteran goalkeeper, if I'm allowed to say that, um, but based on the fact I'm probably the same age as him, uh, but the veteran goalkeeper, McGregor, he, he had a, he had a great, great game. Like, it was a fantastic workout for him, seven seven shots. And going back to your fullbacks uh, situation, Ricky, if we if we had a bit of confidence in our fullbacks, uh, sorry, not our fullbacks, our wingbacks, if we had a bit mm. more confidence in our wingbacks, I think Emerson Well could have had a hat-trick. You know, yeah, if he had a shooting boots on, do you know what I mean? Like yeah, this, yeah. Is, and and this is this is what I'm saying about the result and about everything else. Forget that. People in the comments mm. saying he's 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 not Royale, he's shit, this that and the other. Fair, fair enough, and that's your opinion. That's great, but this is where else are you going to try Lucas Moore as a wing back? Where, where else? Like in a Champions League group game? Like this is pre season. Of course, you're going to try him out there. So don't be surprised that Doherty ain't got a game yet when he's had a massive injury and he's like, do you know what? We've been doing double sessions. We've, you know, you don't, you don't need this match today. Let me see what else I've got on the in the situation. And and actually, you're looking at um, Emerson Royale. If and it's a massive if because he didn't do it. But if he he could finish or if he had the confidence to shoot, he could have had a hat trick. Yeah. So. Look on the bright side, look on the optimistic side, both wingbacks getting into them positions. That's what Conte wants. That's Conte ball. If they can't finish it, then we need to do some coaching, some trainings or some different upgrades or whatever it is. But the reality is seven, eight months ago, eight months ago before Conte arrived, they didn't know what to do. Now yeah. they're both getting in the box. Doherty before mm. he got injured, scoring goals, making assists. Emerson needs probably an upgrade on expense. I think the Sessignon scenario definitely reminds me of Danny Rose. And 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 it reminds me of that situation because everyone's oh, talking about God. Danny Rose and Kyle Walker. <laughs> well, exactly. This is my point. And I know, Jace, you've got a thing with Danny Rose. But my mate, um, who's, who's my best mate, actually, I've known him for, for, forever, uh, a massive season uh, Spurs fan season ago as well, Stefan, Steph Dias, right? He, he was the same with Danny Rose. And then and then, 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 then two seasons when Danny exploded, we were like, where did that come from? Because if you remember before that, Danny wasn't that good. He wasn't great. No, and he, 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 no was, he wasn't. He, he, wasn't. Was, he was quite frustrating the same way as Sessignon's quite frustrating. So there hopefully may be some explosion there. Again, similar situation with Carl Walker. How many how many times did we bemoan Carl? And you know I love Carl Walker, Rick. You know I do. Mm. And how yeah, many yeah. times did we bemoan as Spurs fans, he can't cross? How many times? Yeah. How many times? Go, mm. go back, oh, go back and yeah, watch. Yeah, yeah. Go back and think about it's, it. All it's, Spurs fans. His pace got him out of trouble several times, but yeah, it's all the time. Pace. Even yeah. and he'd, and he'd have a rick in him as well. For, forgive the pun. He'd have a rick in him at the back, but he'd get out of it because of his pace. Bit of Jed Spence situation going on. Do you know what I mean? So there, there's definitely still some work to do, but I'm not surprised at all that. Um, that Emerson Wales started because of, you know, Lucas Moore coming in because I, I think Emerson Wales is the guy that you'll get the most money for in the shop mm. window. So I think you're putting him in the shop window to say, 
maybe his value's gone down after not shooting, but that's what I would be probably looking at rather than it being the other way around. And actually, the fact that them wing backs are getting in them inverted like in them positions to be able to score, mm. the crossing needs to be better. But I think at the end of the day, that you've got he he can see them patterns of play. You can either coach them players to be better or you yep. upgrade them. And 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 hopefully in Spence, maybe in a Lucas Moore, or whatever, you've you've got them upgrades that needed to be there. I mean, he's done it with so many. I mean, he done it with Perisic, didn't he? Well, Perisic wasn't a left wing back. No, he? no, he, he converted yeah, him. He was, yeah, he converted him. He converted yeah. him. He converted yeah. Moses. He's converted, you know, Ashley Young. He's converted. I can't remember what well, he's, he's converted. He's, he's done now it he's lot, trying to do it more. Now he's trying to do it more. Yeah. Well, potentially. Lee, I think. Do, I do think you know the, the other thing with Seth as well? I mean, we get we get little bits of info like off grid. Sessignon, four kilos of muscle he's put on yeah, in pre season. Four yeah. kilos. He's yeah. been working so so hard mm. in pre season, and you know if somebody is that committed to be able to step up and do it, I think you have to give him a chance. Yeah, I think you really do. Four kilo in muscle in one pre season. He's like bulking out. And, and 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 having a go. He's a young lad. He's a young kid. He's he's literally a kid. Like, like I've yeah. said before, I've got shoes older than him. You, you can still see which part. You know, it's, it's confidence. I think it's confidence mm. assessing young. It's, think, it's whether I, again. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Sorry, Rick. Sorry to totally cut you cut across you there, but I, I totally agree with that. It is a confidence thing. Like he, we talked about this last season about his hamstrings and the fact that he's put four cow muscle on. The fact that he's come out and talked about that. Brilliant interviews with Ali Gold. And the snippets that we've had, as you say, that we get the, the them snippets, as you say, uh, crackers on the on the group, and he he's done that because he knew that his hamstring, so he was wary of that. So now go back, now go back and put them performances that he did, knowing that he was wary of his hamstring potentially snapping mm. when he goes to push the back. It means yeah. that he can't go past his man in his head, like he can yeah. physically, but he he has to relearn that and get the confidence to be able to go past his man. But I agree yeah. with King Hoddle, like. I don't know why our fullback, our wingbacks, don't want to go past people. That you know, mm. he's got the pace to do it. Jed Spence, I think. I mean, some of the you know the videos I've seen from him, like he looks at, he looks outstanding. Like I think he'll explode. Personally, I think he's going to be brilliant for us. But mm. it, it, being able being able to have that on the on the flanks to be able to to explode and go past your your um, your man and put a ball in. That's going to be such a massive weapon for us next year, which, which we, uh, sorry, this season, which we haven't had. We haven't had yeah. since. Well, I don't think we've ever had it because even Carl Walker and Danny Rose weren't putting outstanding crosses in, were they, Jace? No, I want to bring, I want to bring Jace. Jace, can I ask you just firstly, do you think the Emerson, do you think the Emerson, <laughs> Jace, do you think the Emerson change was always the plan, 45 minutes, or do you think that was based on his overall contribution? Because, um, again, we've got to be honest with you, every time we got a move towards Emerson in that game, it did break down. That that's not being, you know, trying to single the player out. That's just the reality. That again, I know it's only pre-season. I know you shouldn't take any into this games. It's about fitness at this stage. But um, rightly, I mean, the fact that it looks like a lot of the other fullbacks, maybe, but listen, Doherty's not a huge amount of time either. This 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 campaign. I mean, what do you, what do you think at the moment in terms of these fullbacks, Emerson in particular? What does the future hold for him? I don't. None of us are convinced by him, are we? None of us are convinced. I don't think Conti's convinced. I think there's times when when even the, the players on the pitch aren't convinced because during games, yeah, I mean, during, you could see during that yesterday, Premier League games, you, you, could, you could see, that see yesterday. there's times yeah. the ball could go out to him and the ball doesn't go out to him because they think, what's what's the what's the point? And where uh, oppositions will be clever with it because they won't even bother marking him. They'll, they'll almost say to Tottenham, yep, you know, funnel us. To Watford give away. To him like because they think once it goes to him, we can hack that and there's no problem from there. So it's it's a position that we've got to do something about for sure. Uh, and, it, and the fact that Conti's system is so reliant, really, on on a good thrust for wing-backs, it, it's, it's definitely the position that we, we, we've still got to do a lot with. Um, Jed Spence, you know, the words from Conte suggest that Jed Spence isn't who he um, necessarily wants to to be kicking off the season with a player that might grow into the role and he's more than happy to have him here. But yeah. I'm, I'm still not sure Conti thinks my best right wing back is Jed Spence. So, um, you know, we're down to two weeks to solve that, solve that conundrum. And if it's, if you've got to go into the market again, so be it, we'll have to go in there. But, um, you know, it, 
it's 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 definitely a problem position for us that's for sure can, can i just can I, sorry Rick, sorry can yeah. i just say something on that this is not just aimed at you jace but this is um you know this is just my take on it i think i think the conte scenario of saying about jed spence and it was a club sign and it wasn't his signing everybody everybody has taken that as conte being negative about it i think i think conte's giving the club the credit do you know what what you know i, I sanction all, all all transfers that come he's got a sign off every we know he's they, got a green what, light every deal he's still got a green light every deal I think, yeah. I think the point i'm making is that conte is trying to say well done to the club. They've brought in this young guy and he's he could be fantastic. Look, fair, fair. But uh, most people on social media have taken it as he don't want him. He don't want him. But no, I think he's, he's no, just no, saying, no, no, no. actually, I think he's saying, do you know what? Jed Spence, he, yeah, he's a, he's a really good player and fair play to the club. They were the ones that identified it. It wasn't me, it was them. And I, mm. I, I don't think that's a bad thing. Do you see what I mean? Like, I, I think there's a lot of people on, on, on social media that think that's a bad thing. But I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. And he, he's going to be a very good yeah. player. I, just, I think he's taken out of context because Conte yeah, is in charge. I, I think I, yeah. I just took it as when he brought Benton Kerr and Kulazewski in, he constantly talked about them as starters. Yes. And I don't think he looks at Jed Spence yet for yeah. Southampton on match day one and Chelsea on match day two as a starter. As the season goes on, hopefully we get we get real progress from Jed Spence and, and maybe particularly in that second half of the season... Um, after that World Cup, as players and that are coming back, and his confidence is up, and he's 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 settled into Premier League football and, and all those things. It's not to say he can't become a starter, that's for sure, in the second half of the season. But I think on match day one, Conte doesn't particularly want to play Jed Spence as his first choice on day one. That's that's the only way I took it. I, I, I do think though you wouldn't get this even scenario that Lee you mentioned there. If Conte wasn't the manager of Tottenham, I think it's because Sorry. Conte is the manager. Everybody, yeah. the hysteria blows out of the out of the water that we might be signing a player that isn't the one that Conte's name check. You know, he wasn't on Conte's preferred list. But I don't see why that's a massive problem. I, I really don't. And I'm sure Rich, you would probably agree with that as well, right, Rich? I mean, how do you oh. feel about that whole thing? This blown out of proportion. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you want me to come off the leash here, Rick? Or go on, I listen, go for it. Yeah. there's accounts out there. That absolutely make their living and mm. everything off of negativity. It's as simple as that. We all know who they are. I'm not going to name check them. There's some of them out there, but they're, they're, they're a one trick pony, and it's all been about how terrible it is at the club. Now, things have gone right at the club. Um, so they've been ta their oxygen's been taken away. Now um, Conte makes a statement, and I think a little bit's lost in translation when he says it. I think I think Lee's right. He's giving the club some credit for what they've done, is that they've identified somebody, and the club still has to earn money. If you ain't earning money from Lady Gaga concerts, bringing in players cheaply, selling them on as well, uh, Amazon deals, this, that, and everything else, you can't buy these players. The clubs have to earn money. So they've seen what Conte said about Spence and they've completely twisted it to suit their agenda. And they've all jumped on YouTube and they've all jumped on their channels and they're going, see, told you, he's still buying the players. He's still trying to do these deals. He's still doing this. He's buying players behind the manager's back. It's nonsense. It's absolute Utter, it's a nonsense on stilts, as a, 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 as an MP once said. It really is. And do you know what, Rick? If Conte gets the players that he wants and we buy one or two players that the club wants because mm. it makes commercial sense yeah. that we're buying them in at X and can sell them at Y yeah. and make a good profit on them, good luck to them. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's what we are in here for. Because if you buy a player in for £10 million, and then he becomes worth 50 million. Do you know what? That's 40 million quid in the bank. Mm. And then you can go and give that to your manager, whoever that is, and you can start paying somebody else a, a big wage to, to come in. So these people that jump up and down on social media because it, they're one trick ponies, I, I'm not even, I, I, listen, I'm explaining it here. 
I'm not even giving them the time of day, to be honest. We know who they are. Oh, yeah, Levy's done this deal. Levy's still pulling the strings. Levy's this, Levy's that. Listen, we've all had our differences with the club, uh, but now they're getting it right. So you give them the credit. Give them the credit. You turn around and you go, oh, okay, look, they said they were going to do this, and do you know what? They're now doing it. Yeah. They are now throwing a few quid at this because they've got the revenue streams from the new stadium. And you go, fair play. I know I moaned about you in the past. Now you're getting it right. And that goes with the players and everything. So this Spence deal and those people jumping up and down about it, that's why they're doing it. Because when you click on their channel, you'll get an advert for a bookies or an advert for this or that. They'll have their, their two bobs worth out of it. Thanks very much. So... Yeah, Rick, uh, I'm going to stop there before I start getting getting angry because they're, they're one they're one trick ponies. Go on, James. It's amazing too as well because that that 150 million figure, people want that spent. They don't care who it's spent on. So if we try to sign, uh, I mean, Lee, Lee's favourite Bastoni, for instance, cost mm. you cost you what 60, 65, 70 million. If the player doesn't want to come then you can't go and spend it. So some people think, well, we've got it, so we should just spend it anyway, even if that's our number six, number seven, number eight targets. Mm, and then yet yeah. they're the ones that say, why we, we should be buying our number one targets only. But if a player doesn't want to come, he doesn't want to come. Rafinha didn't want to go to Chelsea, didn't want to go to Arsenal. He went to Barcelona. Quite simple. You know, it's, it's as simple as that. Not every player you go for genuinely wants to come. Kayundi. Doesn't want to go to Chelsea, wants to go to Barcelona. So the fact that they've bid 55 million to him is irrelevant, isn't it? You don't want to go there. So it just shows you, doesn't it, sometimes? It's it's not a case of just, we've got it, so we must spend it anywhere. Don't care where we spend it. Oh, we haven't got a goal kick. Let's go and spend 100 million on a goal kick, just for the sake of it. It's it's nuts. And then next year, in January, as Conti says, well, maybe now this centre-half does want it. Oh, no, sorry, Antonio, we've spent the 100 million on six targets we didn't want, so it's not there anymore. What do people want from that? It's, it's nuts. I agree. I, I mean, just do think, I think, well, just, just on that, I do, I do generally think that there's some people um, on social media or whatever, even it, sometimes in, we get them in here as well, like in the, you know, watching them, whatever, hiding behind a, you know, a, you know, a different photo or whatever it is. And they, 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 they're either just do it to wind you up. I, I get the fishing rod out and start winding you up or they're literally clueless because, you know, it's not just about spending the money. As you just said, Jace, you, just because you've got the money, you don't spend it on something just, just ridiculous. And we've, we've, we've signed Undumbele for 65 million and look how that turned out. Now you have to go and do things properly. Your due diligence, you work, you understand, you get the right people for the right uh, for for the right positions, which is one of the things that our recruitment, with the greatest respect to the club, like our recruitment over the last kind of five six years, has been absolutely abysmal. It's like it's been appalling, um, and this this is one of the reasons why Harry Kane wanted to leave last season, and you know why people wanted to leave. Christian Eriksen wanted to get out of the club, and you know the whole the whole rebuild starting from there because these quality players were fed up with seeing the same old same old. Conte's coming and change, revolutionise that, change the mindset, change the way we are cut, signing players in the right positions early. Just again, the comparison like Liverpool did, you know, on their cycle. I've always said that we're that cycle behind Liverpool. And that, and they've gone on to win unbelievable... Well, they've won everything in the game, haven't they? Uh, uh, you know, since um, since they got to the 2018 Champions League final. So I just think, you know, you, just because you've got the money there, it, you know, we've battered, we've battered the club for not having the money there for so many yeah. years. Now they've put the money there, we're battering them for not spending it in the right place. If you can't get Bastoni, you can't get Bastoni. Don't go and buy someone else who's, who's not good enough. And then you're ended up left with a 65 million and Dembele sitting there for three years on 200 grand a week. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. So you have yeah. to use your brain. I'm sorry, but you have to use your brain. Like surely that is not that difficult to work out. Yeah. Now, I, I just think at the moment, where the club is, I mean, it's very hard to be critical when they've made Rick, six signings. Go sorry, on, Rick, I'm, I'm feeling a bit lonely. <laughs> is that what's coming, was it? The darts is on and I'm feeling lonely, mate. I bet it was. I bet it was. <laughs> that won't apply to people on YouTube that have just seen what's come up on our, our, on our left-hand side of comments here. 
nothing untoward going in this camp. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. But you know, you, you you're totally right there, Jace. That um and and Lee, you know, with the club, you know what they've done so far. We've got we've got six players players in before the actual well middle. Of, we're now end of July, but it was middle of the July. Spurs got six in. Arguably, four of them are going to be starters at least. Spence in time will one hundred percent going to be filtered into the Conte side. Um. Again, Forster, you can see Capel and Abel back up. I'm sure, again, we'll have games to play, domestic games you'll play in next season. And Spurs still don't feel their business has even stopped yet. So I think it's a time to back the club, get behind what they're trying to do, because ultimately, I think you can see the players themselves yeah. definitely feel that there's a different air around the football club than there's ever been. And one player that I feel is shining at the moment, Lee, come over to you, is Harry Kane. Two goals in six minutes for Kane. Um, I mean... When you compare the situation with Kane now to this time 12 months ago, it's in such a different place. Mentally, just physically, Kane looks like a completely different player at the moment. And, um, you know, we saw that Conte has been really quite strong for the first time about some rumours about Kane from Bayern Munich, shutting them down, calling Nagel's been disrespectful. Um, and I think we need to really go into it, but we have to talk about that first goal we did score yesterday because to get us back level, um, the lovely little shift onto the right foot and then unleashing a powerful curling shot. I mean, Lee, he's looking like um, he's midway through the season and we're not even at the start of August yet. I mean, how impressed have you been already by Kane's finishing? Five goals, three pre-season games. He looks more than ready to start, doesn't he? Oh, big time. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. Like, absolutely loving it because he is... Well, you, you, everyone knows. You don't need me to tell you again. He's the goat, mate. He's the best number nine in the world. That's why Nagelsmann's come out and said what he said. He just he, Lewandowski. He's like, oh, hello. He's sniffing around Kane. Um, I, 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 again, I also don't think it's that in, worrying or embarrassing that these other clubs are sniffing around Kane and Son. They should be because they're absolute world class players. And, you know, we moan that no one talks about Son. And then when people start talking about Son, we moan that they're trying to nick our players. You know, the reality of the situation is it's great. It's great for Kane. Kane, I think, can will see the likes of Darwin Nunes coming into the Premier League, the, the likes of Haaland, who obviously scored overnight last night, didn't he, um, for, for City as well. Um, so, um, Erling Haaland's got off the, off the mark for them. Um, and he's going to be looking at that. And everyone's up talking about, oh, would you think, you know, could we be able to keep up with him? They should be worried about Kane. They should be thinking, hang on a minute, Kane, he's the guy that we've got to chase. Kane's the man. Like, he, he's the he's the bloke. Salah obviously signing a new contract at Liverpool. Um, Can't take we a free kick, though, no, Lee. Morning, actually, as we do in the WhatsApp group, wouldn't we, lads? <laughs> and, you know, some of the stats from Kane is absolutely outrageous. Like, you know, he, he, he can't take a free kick to be fair to him, uh, you know. But the, the, the stats make that even more outrageous because he can't score free kicks, and yet he's only I think he's two goals now, three goals off of the top three uh, Premier League goal scorers of all time. Um, Wayne Mooney's on 208, I think he was second. Um, and you know, me and Frankie was having a good old debate in the in, in the in the WhatsApp group earlier, and we both think that we, he can he can get that this year. We we think we can he can get that this year in the Premier League. I think he's going to be on absolute fire. And, and he, he looks fitter, he looks hungry, he looks mean, he looks up for it. And that is a worry for every other team in the Premier League. When you've got Kane, who is one of our own and loves us, the, loves the club to pieces, who's on fire, that's a worry for everyone else. And that is only can be a good thing for us, Rick, can't it, mate? Yeah, totally agree. I mean, uh, Jason's coming over to you, then we're going to crack. So, like I said, five goals and assist in those three games. So it works out to either a goal or assist every 31 minutes that he's on the field. Played 188 minutes so far of pre-season. Is that exactly what he needs just going into this new campaign? We, we all know what we've got with Harry, don't we? I, I would actually wouldn't be bothered if he hadn't scored a goal or done anything in pre-season because you still you still know what to expect. But how important is it, though, JT? He has started really well pre-season. Yeah, there's no, been times where he's been slowly. I mean, it was, he has started slow in pre-season and also in the start of the season, but it just feels the opposite way around this time. Yeah, Without a doubt, and it's the quality of the goals that he scored already. You know, the the ping into the bottom corner in in Korea, the, even the disallowed goal was was similar. The, the Agreed. top yeah. corner effort there. Yep. It's the quality of finishing. Uh, although he had that one on one chance, obviously yesterday that he missed, didn't he? But we we know what Harry's going to turn up. I mean, Walter's wet, isn't it? It's it's as simple as that with Harry. You know exactly where they get from him. I mean, in, in what in eight years he had one one lean spill where he went. 
you know, the start of a season without performing well. I mean, it's eight years of consistent week in, week out, goal after goal after goal. So I have no doubts he'll, he'll certainly score 20 Premier League goals, providing he plays the number of games. But mm. in a weird way, you know, if he only scores 15 Premier League goals and Richarlison scores 12 Premier League goals and Sonny scores 18 Premier League goals and Kulazewski scores 15 Premier League goals... It just doesn't really matter, does it? It's no, about what the pretty... team does. So, but he's, he looks, he looks confident. He looks sharp. He looks lean and, and rearing to go, and, and that's got to be a good sign. I think Southampton up first. I think that's one of his little, uh, his, his little slap around teams, isn't it? Where he's, he's scored ridiculous number of goals against Southampton, Southampton and Leicester and Arsenal particularly. So, uh, I expect him to score next Saturday. Or two weeks' time, Saturday. It's funny, yeah. Uh, just to throw in some listener questions here. I know we've been a bit slack on them over the last uh, few months of the season. Uh, Damien, Damien Dezanik says, any chance of resting Kane next week? Give him a weekend off before the onslaught. Uh, I mean, like I say, the form he's on at the moment is quite remarkable. Cracks coming around to you. Um, isn't it lovely mm. to see, you know, Spurs' two main men, Kane and Son, really linking up in pre-season? I thought, again, Son, Kane, that telepathic partnership was there so early to see in pre-season. And, um, I mean, Giovanni Van Bronckels after the game said, Kane and Son, we're talking about top five, top six strikers in the world, not only atta- in attack, but in transition. Mm. Uh, you said we could we cope well, but you could see that quality. And then when they're subbed on against you, you could see the appreciation of the Rangers fans for that quality. And we have to make that point that um, we saw after, well, we saw when Kane went off, he got a standing ovation. And that's bearing in mind that Kane is English, right? He's up in Scotland. He's the England captain. And um, it's still getting an ovation like that. And likewise, Sonny as well. I mean, just shows you, Rich, that they're the most toughest fans. You know, this Scotland fans, they're not easy mm. to, to prove, no. you know, to try and say, to get an ovation yeah. like that in pre-season. Yeah. That's a yeah. remarkable feat, isn't it? Yeah, Rick, Kane, uh, you know what I've, I've thought about Kane in the past. But listen, Kane is world class. He really, he really is. He, he is now world class. Uh, last preseason, he was sulking. There was this going on, that going on. Conte's come in again. All roads lead. All roads lead back to Conte. He's come in, and he loves playing for him. The club's backing him. He, he's a man of his word. He said, "If I see the club going in the right direction, yeah. I'm happy to stay." Absolutely. Guess what? Club's going in the right direction. Yep. He's now happy. There's not a not a thing going on around Harry Kane at the moment, apart from Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich ain't got two hundred million pound to drop on on Kane. Well, and that's what it's going to cost you to get him. By the way, now, I mean, if Jack Grealish is hundred million pound, he is. Oh, what he, he is. He is two hundred million pounds. And by the way, so son. Because like we was talking about earlier, this isn't just a game of football anymore. This is all about what you can raise as revenues mm. and what you can bring into a club financially. Yep. And what we saw in South Korea with Son and the figures that were, were Ali Gold put up around him. Um, he's a £200 million player. Even if you pay £100 million for Son as a footballer, You've got to pay another hundred million pounds for the marketing to bring behind him in it. for Absolutely. the marketing. Agreed. So between yep. those two players, you're looking all right. You're looking at four hundred million pounds. Uh, uh, listen, I'll be. Uh, I will. I will be conservative. You're looking at three hundred million pounds. <laughs> I love Jace's face. Jace looks like he's. Uh, he's are you, Jace, Jace, you reckon four hundred? Tell, tell me I'm wrong. Tell no, me I'm, I'm not, wrong. I'm not. But you've got to drop three hundred million pounds minimum, minimum to get you Son and Kane. That's mind-boggling, Rick. That is absolutely yeah. mind-boggling. And guess what? I mean, that's commer- like commercial value for the pair of them is incredible. Son mm, with his yeah. pull in South Korea, Kane is a clean living boy. He's I'm he's trying, a marketer's delight. <laughs> I'm doing a John Wellham tonight. I'm doing a John Wellham, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Rick, if John Wellham's not in his hostage room, he's in the darkness in his car, isn't he? (laughs) He's one of our own. (laughs) 
<laughs> Love and John Weller, mate. I'm doing, I'm doing the John, I'm quick, Queen special, me and John, mate. We're, we're doing Queen special. Hello, for your, week. your tan's looking better by the minute, Lee, I tell you, mate. Oh, mate I'm, just, I'm sweating so much. Yeah, you don't even know, mate. It's quite, it's quite the tan, the tan is really good. Here. No, honestly. It's uh, here, mate. It's dark. No, yeah. mate. Jeff, they Jeff, are. Jeff. They're, there's yeah. three hundred million pounds, three fifty million pounds worth of strikers. Yeah. And Kane now, now he's settled. Now he's happy. Now yeah. he can see the club going the right way. That first goal yesterday was outrageous. Yeah. You could have put three goalkeepers in that goal. They're yeah. not saving that. And listen, if he takes that into the season, that drop of the shoulder, nick a yard, two yards, and and curling one into the top corner, forget it. He is, uh, honestly, like, given f- maybe four or five years ago when Ronaldo was doing what he was doing and Messi was doing what he was doing, uh, Levin, uh, Lewandowski, uh, Lewandowski, I'm, I'm yeah, no yeah. Lewandowski, Mate, yeah. thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Now, I think he's top of the pole, Rick. I think he is actually top of the pole. Yeah. And he's ours. And I'm, I'd love to see it. I absolutely love to see it. It's, it's brilliant. I, I, yeah. I love it. He is. I'm, I'm now proclaiming him world class. If you want to get into my world class club, you've got to be doing something special. And he's doing bits, Rick, all, yeah. all day long. See, this, like, oh, he's world class. He's this, he's that. It's subjective. It's all what you put on it. Yeah, what you deem to be world class. What 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 you deem personally, yeah. Mm. And he never quite was getting there. Now, I think this season, I think Kane's going to be like, wow. Absolutely wow. And the way he's second goal, I mean, he took, he took that. So, I mean, he took that in the form of a player that's already got 30 for the season. That That's mm. what, you know, Kane looked mm. like. It's just remarkable. It really, really is. But what we will just do is we'll just go for our next break of the show for our listeners and audio, for our watching audience on YouTube. There's nearly around a thousand of you watching us live across all of our platforms. You had the beauty of seeing Lee in the Spanish sunset from a, from light to darkness as he beats down for the evening. Oh, Lee, Lee. I'd love to move to Spain one day. Oh. It looks absolutely marvellous out. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yes, that is. <laughs> Mate, I, think, I think you did that a few years ago, Sancho. <laughs> We're loving it in Spain. Can we have, you haven't quick... got an episode of Garden as well from Jason, unfortunately, for the night. But go on, Lee. Go on, Garden as well. Can I just take this opportunity? It's a little bit of a shout out, a personal one, actually. So forgive me for, for, for using the channel to do this. But I just want to shout out to Alistair and his family. They He knows who, who, who they are. Um, he started supporting Tottenham Hotspur in 1959, um, and then his brother Paul, his two children, both Duncan and Rachel, and Mark, Marie, and Claire, all Spurs fans. So you've got like generations of Spurs fans uh, that are um, that are that absolutely loving Tottenham, and our paths have crossed. And and I didn't know anything about them, you know, in terms of being Tottenham fans. And they they explained to me the other day that they're all proper Spurs through and through. Um, so I just wanted to give them a shout out to say, no, you know what I mean? Like one of us, one of our own, um, Alistair and his family, fantastic. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, come on, you Spurs. So uh, thanks for letting me do that, Rick. Love they it. know who no, they are. Absolutely no problem at all. Uh, just want to have a quick word about Decky. Uh, we'll start with you, Rich, on this. Um, he was booked for what looked like simulation yesterday, about 10 minutes into that second half. And to be fair, listen, he didn't look happy about it and he never really mm. recovered. Um, after that, I mean, he, I've got to say to him, in the first half, he looked like one of our most uh, encouraging players on the day, mm. one of our players that were going to make things happen in that first half. Um, I mean, we're going to need him for the start of the season. Do you think he's had enough game time so far, Rich, between now? Obviously, he probably will get the Roma game, like Jay said, because uh, Richie's going to be suspended. What, what have you made about Decky overall so far pre-season? Have you been happy with him so far? Yeah, I mean, off the back of last season, <laughs> man's got his own song. I mean, you know, Crowd, football crowds know a player, and if, once you get once you get a song, mm. that's it. You're done. So it's it, it is one of those. I, yeah, I love Decky. I've got no worries about him whatsoever. He's like I read it, read the story about him. I think he went to Italy when he was like 13 years old. Yep. Without his parents. Oh, it's remarkable. For, yeah, yeah. He's, 13, 14 years old. An independent and journey wet. into football. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he went from Sweden over to Italy and went to state school. And there he is learning the language. So he's done his hard yards already. I mean, he's like, what, he's 21, 22 now. 
Um, so he gets shipped off from, from Sweden over to Italy, learns a language, becomes a footballer. So, I mean, there's a boy that's 22 going on 50. Mm. He's got yep. an, he's got a wise old head on his shoulders. Yep. Um, so I've got absolutely no worries about him at all. And his quality, he picks a ball up and he does things sometimes and you go, yeah, that's quality. I, mm. I, I really like what you... Not everything works out, but you can see that quality that he's got. He just oozes it. He's He's very similar to Romero. In that he's just got that quality. Do you get what I mean? He's like yep. Romero in, in the back, he does things and you go, Oh my, there's a footballer. I really love watching him doing what he's doing. And Romero does that in his position, Decky does that in his. So, I mean, it's frightening. He's frightening, but he's 21, 22 years old. And he's got that sort of ability. What's he going to be like when he gets to 26, 27, yeah, 28? Yeah. And, he's in, and he's in his prime. So De Decky's one of those absolutely on the safe list. He, he yeah. really is. And uh, yeah, it, that's Conte again. Conte and Paratici have seen the player. They know the quality. He hasn't quite fitted in where he was. We've taken him, given yeah. him a home, making him feel welcome. And he's doing that. Brilliant. I, I love him. Yeah, I've got no... He's one of those first names on the team sheet for me, Rick. What do you reckon of you, Jace? Do you think he's had enough minutes so far pre-season? Obviously, you'll probably get the uh, the majority of the Roma game, you'd imagine, next week in the build-up to Saints. But uh, was that a cheeky dive yesterday, Jace? It looked it from, from the angle we saw, let's be honest. It looked it. It was just a hell of a delay, wasn't he? He'd gone past the man before he went over. But uh, I, I, what I... I mean, I've said it in the group of late with, with uh, Decky, with all the talk about Madison, 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 or we need a, a cam, as you uh, FIFA players call it. Yeah. I've said, um, you know, if, if you bring in, um, they're talking about Zaniolo, or yep. whichever it is, or, or, or another player there, that, that may well give you the opportunity to play Kulazewski in a Madison role. And he's certainly got that in his locker. He could certainly move centrally. And, and I don't see why not. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you haven't spent 70-odd million on, on what Leicester are going to want for, for James Madison. And he's already in the team and he already knows the work ethic and, and all of that. So, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be surprised if Kulazewski is playing out on the, the right all his, all his time. I think he will eventually move more into a much more central role. So, no, he's a, he's a very good, classy player. But like, but like any twenty-two-year-old, he's, he's got lots of room to improve, and he will do. That's the show. I mean, the, the interviews that we see from Korea, where he he does he did that thing. He looks a terrific character, doesn't he? Absolutely. The interview he yeah, did yeah. with the with yeah. the two lads back in Sweden, he looks yeah. like he's got a, a little bit of personality and that about him, which is which is nice. But uh, you know, big hopes for for Decky. And then let's be honest, the, the impact he's made already is huge for us. Yeah, and as Aditya says there, spot on Jace, Kulu mm. played as a 10 after we were two down against Wolves. So again, listen, might be an option. We'll wait to wait and see on that. Um, obviously, in terms of the game at that point, we, we saw... We still, we lost that game 2-0, by the way. <laughs> just, yeah, I'm just, just saying. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> I'm yeah, just saying. Cool. For context, 100%. Uh, we saw Ivan Perisic, Richarlison come on for Sessegnon Young and Kulusevski, uh, respectively. You know, Richarlison, I think... Know what you think, Lisa? I mean, he works out very, very hard when he's on the field, and that's the one thing I've picked up so far. In the games I've seen him, uh, he's a player that's willing to run. Uh, he doesn't lack effort at all whatsoever. Um, and I think you could tell a little bit. I don't know what you thought about this, Lee. I thought when I watched it, he was a little bit struggling, I think, to work out where he should maybe fit in and where to find the space with Kane and Son. But that will come in time. I mean, listen, it's very, very early um, into pre season. I know Conte was absolutely seething at one point where. Uh, he was on the end at quite of a real thump, uh, Richardson, um, on the touchline. Uh, the Rangers defender kind of left him in his way. I mean, these, these, no, Jace, have I got a bit? Have I exaggerated that? No, it was a foul. foul. It was a okay. foul when Richardson was Richardson. <laughs> Maybe because he spurs now. I'm instantly trying to defend him. In fairness, I mean, I saw it earlier where people are trying to compare Gabriel Jesus to him and the impact that they've had. Yeah, I think the difference is Gabriel Jesus is already going to be the, the focal point of Arsenal's play. Blimey, who's that? 
<laughs> Lee got Lee got a few strays with him. You know? Who led the dogs out? No. Who? 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 Sorry, it's, it Who is led properly the dogs kicking out? off here. Honestly, it's properly kicking off with dogs. I just got attacked dogs by a pack of field mice. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I'll mute myself. It's going. It's proper kicking off. No, I think Gabriel Jesus has been the the focal point of what Arsenal are trying to do because they know where they're going to play him. And with Richarlison, he's coming in to be one of several positions. So yesterday he plays for about ten minutes on the right. Then he plays on the left, then he plays down the middle. And we know we've got Kane and Son, which will be the, the focal points for us. So he just needs to adapt to the roles that he's going to be asked to play. And I think there'll be times when he is asked to play as a nine and there'll be times when he's asked to play wide. And it's just a question of him getting used to it, getting into the system to do it. But, um, you know, the one thing he, he looks like he, he can do, isn't it, is it? another player that can run in and behind the defence. We saw a, an excellent ball from Longley ping down the line to him where he, he drew the foul. So, um, you know, I'm not too worried about his lack of of goals or anything in pre-season. Uh, it's just a question of him getting used to and coming in, playing different roles within that team. Just stay on your feet a bit more, mate. Yeah, I mean, it is very, very early. Um, it is very, very early indeed. Um, one player I do want to talk about, come out of you, Cracks, Animal we'll Garana Lee, mm. is um, Ivan Perisic. We saw a glimpse um, of what there is to come. And I love that, you know, that thing, you know, you know, age is just a number. We saw that acrobatic um, overhead kick from Perisic. He's not shy, is he, to show very early on what he's about. How excited are you, Rich, to see him fully fledged at Spurs and put into some real tough Premier League games to come? Rick, he's that old head we mm. need in the team. Absolutely, yeah. And like, I'd say old, but that is, he's literally just a number. Have you seen him? He's 33. Have you, you could grate cheese on the man. The guy looks like, I mean, he's like, he looks like he's 24, 25. He looks like he's in the he's, absolute he's, prime. He's, of his he's absolutely, cheese. he's insane. He's a baller. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So, Conte's probably going to give him two days off a week from training, come in when you fancy it. And do you know what? He's one of them boys that will turn up on the day at a game. He's a big game player. He's a big game he will player. Love the dark, he'll love the dark. Get him in a final. The Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. that that's where that's where he's going to yeah. come to life. Agreed. Because you know what? He's thirty three. He's up there. He's been there. He's done it. And his body can can sign the checks, but his head's right in because he's and, and he's great still, the cheese crackers uh, and, and great, great the, the cheese, cheese. <laughs> and great. Yeah, exactly. Adrian, as Adrian says, yeah, he's pedigree. He's absolute, yeah. but. Not just not just what he does on the pitch around the training, uh, like the, the, the training ground as well. He'll be speaking to people like Sessignon. He'll be speaking to the younger lads as well. He, he remind, he's the type of like, type of player that will probably go on, and he'll be speaking to the young lads in the squad and uh, <laughs> crackers and cheese. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, he he will be he will be speaking to uh, like to those and he will be giving them some tips and some advice. An old Ed, a wise old Ed around that team is is invaluable, absolutely invaluable. So as much as Hoybier is the dustman, uh, I've got now, to catch on I'm, now. I'm I'm I am actually yeah. announcing this evening Perisic is the cheese grayer. There you go. So he's the cheese. Uh, honestly, he's absolutely <laughs> fit as a flea. He's got everything in his locker. He's been there. He's done it. Watch him this season. Watch him <laughs> score us some goals or even assist and create some moments where you go, wow. And those two, three points that he can get you, just it'll be off the scale. Absolutely off the scale. Perisic, brilliant. That's kind exactly of, what this team needed. Exactly. Yeah. Can I just say, Jason looks so confused that Perisic has already got a nickname and we haven't even started the season yet. Look at that face. He looks, he's like... The cheese grater. Perisic, <laughs> the cheese... Uh, Rick, f when I come back over to the UK, I'm going to go and buy myself a home shirt with his... What number is Perisic? Oh, then we've got to get the numbers. 14. 14. 14. Yeah, 14. I'm going to have 14, the cheese grater on the back of my shirt. There you go. Spurs when you see, love, me, Spurs will love when you see me in Beaver Town, the cheese grater on the back of my shirt and number 14. There you go. You, from, you can grate one, cheese on the man. Get one from DH Gate, mate, if you're yeah. going to put the cheese grater on the back. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> uh, we'll get one out here, crackers. 
<laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, might as well. James, coming over to you. Um, early thoughts on Perisic so far? Was it a decent cameo to see? Yeah, it was one one excellent cross, wasn't there? Just a little yeah. dink cross to the far post. The the bicycle kick was unlucky. And as as Craig, we know the pedigree that they've got in the player. We know we know all about Perisic. So uh, he's and he's a prime example of what I mean. That match day two at Chelsea, go and go and have the attitude that he'll take to that game. That's what I mean. I want ten Perisic's with the with the mindset to go and play at Chelsea. That's that's the key thing. But I, I saw a Channel Four documentary on cheese graters and what can be done with them. And uh, oh, gee, no, I, hope yeah, yeah. I hope he's not a cheese grater. I tell you After that. After what we said, Jace. I hope I hope he's not a cheese grater. <laughs> I've, I've oh, never wanted grated cheese ever since, I tell you. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is a family show, Jason. Oh. Move on, Rick, swiftly. <laughs> it was a family show. One of the um, most painful things I've ever seen, mate, I tell you. <laughs> Eric Dyer, uh, very quickly on this, we'll just make it a mention because um, he, towards the end of that game, was hobbling around. <laughs> we saw Joe Roden come on to replace him. Uh, Conte, we haven't actually had any real update on Dyer. We assume he should be okay. Roden really fitting in seamlessly, had a good second half. Um, Rangers really had a good chance to win it towards the end there. We saw James Sands miss a really good chance on the home side. Then came the debut of Longley. We're getting so many cheeses here. It's ridiculous. There's Cheese Central coming into last yeah. one on Spurs here. I'm, I'm disappointed. Thought... I'm disappointed. Nobody has mentioned Davinson Sanchez is back ill. I mean, I, but I think Jace well, knows where. Yeah, but, no, but I think quality. if it leads to a goal, though, Jace, is that the reason we get to mention? Does it What's deserve a, a mention? moment of genius? Come on, yeah. you're gonna give Big Dav a shout out for that back heel. Go on, That's Dav. I, yeah. I like Dav. I like. You know what? I'm, I'm the first one of the first people to criticise uh, Big Dav when he plays on the left. I think uh, when he plays on the right hand side, of that free, uh, uh, the back free, I think he's very good. I, I think he can be very good understudy to Romero. When he plays on that uh, on the left hand side, I'm like, mate, calamity, please. You know, I'm I'm not having him. But I really like the way he's got that aggressive front foot uh, um, about him. Um, and I know, Jace, you always talk about like being on the front foot and stuff as a team. But I actually, he's he's definitely learned that through through Conte and his coaching staff is to kind of really get on the front foot. We're getting loads of cheese stuff going on here, listeners. Cheese cheese comments everywhere, mate. Last word on San cheese, cheese. San cheese. Oh, big dab, San <laughs> cheese. Get in there, Kaylin. That's quality. But, uh, and so, they're so quite right, about... is it? And Dombele is the cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> and Dombele's eating all the cheese. Like, we've, had, we've had them all. But on, on big um, Davison uh, Sanchez. He's, he's, he's brilliant. Oh, <laughs> brilliant. I'm liking it. Brilliant. Yeah, loving it. Loving it. But on Davison Sanchez, he's on the left hand side. I, he, he, he worries me. But he's, his front foot stuff, his aggressiveness, he's, he's, I think he's learning that from the coaching staff, from maybe the likes of Romero. You talked about Perisic there yeah, and assessing him being an understudy and learning from him. There's no reason why on the other side of the pitch they can't learn from Perisic. Do you see what I mean? Like, you know, a right wing back. He, he, it wouldn't good. Yeah, surprise me not? if he plays right wing back as well. Like, yeah. he can go and play wherever he likes, can't he? Um, you know, the cheese grater. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like I just, I just think, you know, the, 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 the way that he's... I know, but the, the fact that, that, you know, these are, you know, they are getting quite, you know, great in here. Nigel Fox, a nice one. But, you know, I think the way that the that Conte's built the squad and the players that he's got in the team and the squad, they can learn from each other. Yeah, agree. Totally agree. Right, let's move on as quick as we can try and move on from the cheese as well. Uh, as I mentioned, Longley came Great on um, for his debut. Um, and then obviously Spence, to be fair, come around to you, Jace. Not a bad first touch. He made such an important tackle in the box. It may have led to a goal, but um, fine interception from him. Very early, Jace, to really say much about Spence because he didn't have too long on the field. But um, did you like what you see there from a very, very brief oh, cameo that, appearance? For that 10 minutes, it was... Um... You say that was the most important thing he did, wasn't it? Yeah, into the impact. And, and as good as you are going forward, you still need that person to be able to defend a little bit. So the fact that he uh, he uh, knew where the danger was going to be, got himself in the right position to snuff it out, that's that's a good sign for him as well. So hopefully we see more of him in that um, in that Roma game next week. And that, that's yep. the key thing. Yeah. Yeah. We'll fly through some of the players, only because conscious we have got a shit quiz coming your way, hosted to be by Senior Crackers, who we're going to pass the mic over to very, very soon. Romero, I know Lee, you referenced this on your uh, Twitter feed. And again, the levels of this guy's performance, uh, so assured, so calming. And we understand from Ali Gold, I just want to get this quote right, because I know Ali's uh, on Sunday put a, a message out there with Romero that 
for Tottenham at the moment. There's been lots of talk around when that deal will be made permanent. Uh, at the moment, Ali has said that um, Spurs will look to turn that permanent move, well, turn that move from a loan into a permanent on a specific date, which is yet to be reached. And when it does, there'll be a full announcement from the club. Tiny update there. Listen, go in a plan. It won't be long, I'm sure. But like I say, a specific date to be arranged. Um, Tanganga, very quickly, boys, at the moment. Um, he came on for the final 10 to actually replace Romero. He had a good had a good last 10. There wasn't really much to say about his performance. But it looks like he's closing in on a move to AC Milan. Um, Spurs trying, as we understand at the moment, to negotiate a buyback in there. Jace, does that come as a surprise to you, Jaffet Tanganga moving on, or is that just a case of he's just not going to get rid of the minutes this season? And I always go back to the point that you made, that really, as you've always said, you've never seen a general improvement from him since his debut for Tottenham, which, of course, was at home against Liverpool under Jose Mourinho. Yeah, I think he's never really got into a rhythm of game since. So I thought they might, particularly as he's a club club own grown and we do know the importance of that on uh, in European football they might try and get him a loan out for the for the time being and, and let's see where he is at the end of it maybe a loan with a with an optional fee and if it works out for the for the other club you'd take it and if he, if he really played well at Tottenham you, you could bring him back so I'd be surprised to see him go permanently whereas I wouldn't be surprised to see Roden go permanently but you know, we've brought in, what, six play or seven players, if you include Romero coming in as well as a genuine as a genuine signing. It looks like we'll do more business. The nature is you've got to, you've got to create room in that squad and, and, and some players have got to go. You, you can't have yeah. a, a named squad of 35 players, can you? No. So no. at some stage, and with wage bills and things like that, players have to go. So, um, you know, whether he, whether he looks good enough... Uh, <coughs> For whether he'll do well enough for AC Milan, it's worth noticing that um, what's his name, uh, Tamori, went out to there had a really good season. Uh, everyone wrote Chris Smalling off. He's he's played really well in Italy. So yep. you know, good, I mean, if if it is a permanent move, good luck to him because I think mm -hmm. a little bit like Winks, when they do come through and they are Spurs through and through, and they've never let the club down. You know, they've never spoke badly of the club and things like that. You know, they've they've not milked money out of the club. You you do hope that they can get a a successful career for themselves somewhere else. And uh, if it is to be a permanent, so be it. But do I look at Jaffet Tenganga and think, even in the games he has played, are we going to be missing a, a world-class centre-half in the making? Probably not. He'll be a, yeah. a decent Premier League player. So, in yeah. which case, good luck. Yeah, good luck to him. Very quickly, Rich, come over to just you. On, got, just on, oh, go on, oh go sorry. On. I was just going to say, just quickly on Jaffet, if I can, you know, you know, regardless of what happens, if it's an obligation to buy or, if, you know, if he comes back to us after that, uh, isn't Paolo Maldini still at AC Milan or part, yes. part of the coaching or set up yeah, yeah, there? I mean, uh, this is an unbelievable opportunity. Yeah, an unbelievable opportunity for Tang Tanganga for looking at it from, from that side of things as well. And you're right, Jace, T Tamori done fantastic. He won the league last year. He won Serie A. He's got a Scudetto under his belt. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, these all these players that have come through the, you know, Chelsea or Tottenham's uh, youth um, academies and that sort of stuff, they can, they've proved that they can go away and, and go and do some really good stuff. Look at Jaden Sancho and all that sort of stuff. So, Tammy you know, Abraham to had a brilliant season. Yeah, Tammy, he had a fantastic season. Brilliant Chris season. You mentioned yeah. as well. Yeah. So, you know, these, these guys are doing some really good stuff just. Just because it doesn't, it, sometimes it might not work out for you at the club that you, you've you developed at, but doesn't mean to say that you're a bad player. And good luck mm -hmm. to the fella. Hopefully, yeah. he'll come back to us um, in the future because um, I read this. Uh, I read this morning that is either an obligation to buy or a buyback clause in there. Yeah. So look, go away, go and do some out, do some outstanding bits over in Milan, and come back to Tottenham one day and uh, and, and do the business. But um, yeah, yeah R Romero, pff, different class, mate. Literally mm. different level. Yeah, Rich, just want to come on to you and just give you a chance on ta uh, Tanganga mm -hmm. there. Uh, again, just to reference Paolo Maldini, he's the Sporting Strategy and Development Director. So, I mean, it's a bit, be a big move for Tanganga. Rich, you did the four Chelsea games with me, which I'm still apologising you for. I'm probably still paying you back to having to do them for us on last <laughs> one of Spurs last season. Um, in those four games, Rich, we did see just Tanganga really just make the mistakes he made. As, as Jace has always said, and I've referred to it a minute ago, never really improved since that debut against Liverpool under Jose Mourinho at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. What's your take on it for you, Rich? Is it the right time for Tanganga to move on, given the other options there for us at centre-back? Jace, how old's Tanganga now? How old was he when he played 20, at, at, at Chelsea game? 
10 games. 23 or something. So he was, what, 21? I think he's older than that. I think he's 22 or something now. He's 23 now, so he'd have been 21. 21. Yeah, Yeah, that's, that's still young. That's still... When you look at somebody like Perisic, as we were talking about previously... It's 33, 34. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's 13 years into the future for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. That's what, so, I mean, I love, that's what Conte the, wants to work, 21, doesn't he? Really? He wants 22, to prove it. Yeah. 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 The, you know, yeah. I, I don't think people make enough allowances, like, especially for us of uh, uh, of us uh, like that have got mm-hmm. kids. I mean, I've got a daughter of 24, one of 21. I've got a son of 18, son of 14. So when these when these players are like 21, 22 years old, I know what they're like as people. I know what their uh, maturity is like. And at, at 20, like think back to yourself, Jace, like you, you're a man of a similar vintage of me. What was you like at, at 21 years old? I can't even That's imagine not beginning That's not to play. Morning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but playing in front of 60,000 people with that pressure on you at 21 years old, just to even be go, to go out there and perform at all, at all, is just like, it's incredible. So, look, he might well go out there. He might enjoy the lifestyle. Uh, Rick, mm. I can only like speak for myself. I've come to live in Spain. Mm. I love living here. I, I love the lifestyle. Do. I kind of, <laughs> exactly. I kind of think I was born in the wrong country, but living here is where I belong. So somebody like Tanganga might go to Italy and go. I actually really like this. I like the vibe of the place. I think I like my will life. Be suited to there. I definitely think his style exactly. of football will be exactly. suited to there. I, I, yeah. I definitely, yeah, yeah. But Rick, uh, you know, because I do the Legends Nights, I've learned yeah. that footballers aren't just footballers. Do you know what? No, they're, Guess they're what? Hum- they're, yeah. they're human beings. Of course they they're are. Yeah, people. Of course, of course, of course. And they have to be happy in their home life and what's going on yeah. in the hours outside of football. So do you yeah. know what? He might go to Italy and he might enjoy the lifestyle. Yeah. And he might settle and he might be living somewhere really nice and he goes out and da 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 and all of a sudden he goes, I really like it. I'm Dude. happy. I'm happy as a person living here. And do, do you know what? That gets reflected in your work. Football's no different if you're to when you're a butcher, a baker, a candlestick maker, a plumber, or anything. If everything's fine at home and yeah. you're happy in your life. Mm. you'll be happy in your work or yeah. you'll take it into your work because in the background, everything's good. So he might go in there and absolutely love it. We've seen players that go overseas and like they were brilliant in, in the UK. Ian Rush, what happened to Ian Rush when he went to play in Italy? Mm. He, he couldn't stop scoring in the UK. When he played for Liverpool, he was absolutely unbelievable. And he went to Italy, couldn't sell, didn't like it. Weren't, weren't, my, my thing is a home bird. So he never really lived up. Uh, uh, Jason, he went to Juve. Is that Juve? Yeah. He flopped, went Juve. He, yeah, he flopped. flopped because he never really settled there. So yeah. this, isn't, this isn't just about crossing the white line and playing football and, and kicking a, like a, a pig's bladder around for 90 minutes. Honestly, you've got to be a settled person. You've got to be like everything's got to be right in the background for you to go to work and enjoy your work. So Tanganga, he might go there and he might absolutely love it and absolutely flourish. And I hope he does. Yeah. Because I think there's a player in there. Yeah, you know, he, he's a kid. Give him some more years. Like not everybody is a world star at 19, 20, 21. Yeah. It, by 25, and if we've still got an option on him after he's done two years there, we might go get him back. Have you seen him absolutely tearing it up in Syria? So, yeah, it's, you know, it's there's so much more to football than football. It's as simple as that. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah good luck to him. I hope he goes there and hopes he loves it and hopes he smashes it. We might be in two years even be able to buy Bastoni because we say, well, we've got a buyback clause on Tanganga. 
we're going to trigger be that buyback clause, and then all that, of a sudden, boom, transfer that, a dump. Wouldn't that, be, wouldn't that be mad? Wouldn't that be mad? One day we're, we're debating that. Right, conscious guys, we're going to fit in the shit quiz. Um, very quickly, some other players that we touched upon. Um, Joe, we'll take a question, actually, because uh, we've mentioned about Sessegnon. We've mentioned about Lucas Moura uh, coming in as a converted fullback once again for Tottenham as a wing-back. Um, this is from, let's go to, let's go to Jason. This is from Nick Flanagan at OZ Spurs 11, who says, who do you see playing in the two wing-back spots, Jace? He says, for me, it's Perisic left wing-back and then either Doherty or Spence with Lucas as a backup at right wing-back. We should sell Emerson, in my opinion. He's not a natural wing-back in the Conte system. Jace, say we're playing Southampton tomorrow. Who are your two starting wing-backs for you at the moment? Uh, Perisic and Doherty. Okay. For and, match day one. And you haven't been, have you been surprised at all, Jason, about the lack of game time so far for Doherty? I know it's been picked up by quite a few people. Surprised by the lack of it? Or is that just down to players needing minutes bit, elsewhere? A little bit, but, you know, he, it's just minutes elsewhere and other, and trying, and, you know, as somebody says, if you're going to try Lucas Moura there, you've got to tr- give him time to play a few minutes there. But, you know, I think, plus the fact Doherty did have that big injury at the end of last year, didn't he? So, um, you know, they, they might well have held back just a little bit on that, but, I would even, my, for Southampton, match day one, it would be um, Perisic and Doherty. Okay, interesting. Just so to RJ, uh, yeah, I, I like the look of Tavernier. I think he's a really good player. I know we had a couple of Rangers fans in here. I've always liked the look of Tavernier. I think he was really good for Rangers 18 last 18 goals from fullback. 18, yeah, 18 goals. goals. Including penalties, Lee. Including yeah, yeah, penalties. but insane. Yeah, but the insane. Only, the only, but we the only we included three kicks for Kane, and he's, he, <laughs> you know what I mean? he scored 70. Yeah. I, I think, uh, I think Tavernier. Uh, I think he's about to sign a new contract at Rangers anyway. And the only the only part thing I would say with Tavernia is if if he was really Premier League ready, surely Gerard would have made the would have signed him for Villa or made that move for Villa. And we haven't really so, seen him with many Premier League clubs, have we really? No, you know, the fact no. that Gerard worked with him for as long as he did, and yeah. there's no doubt he's a big player for Rangers. Big, big player and looks looks incredibly Massive, strong yeah. and did a lot of good yeah. things. But Three. I'm a little bit surprised, for instance, that Aston Villa haven't, because Aston Villa have done some big business in the transfer market, but that's yeah. not a position they've looked to do. So yeah. um, if Gerard's not sure about him for whatever reason, maybe yeah. there's, you know, maybe that tells you something didn't as well. Didn't they bring you Matty Cash? Didn't, didn't they bring you Matty Cash? They did. In Polish yeah. international now, isn't he? <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? Absolutely lovely, oh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Mad. Oh, um, midfield wise, uh, Hoybier, listen, we didn't really pick up on it. He was guilty of missing a massive, massive opportunity to bring Spurs level straight after uh, Rangers had scored. He got 81 minutes under his belt. Again, a player you feel is going to be integral to Conte, getting lots of minutes during pre season. Benson Kerr again, he put some really strong tackles in midfield, a good number of appearance for him. Uh, Pape well, Matasar. You were brilliant. I thought you were brilliant, Rick. Absolutely well, thought, brilliant. It was all right. It was all right. Listen, class, it was mate. all right. Different class, uh, Pape Matasar, probably difficult to tell with Pape what's going to happen with him. He got 10 minutes, um, played okay. Listen, it's hard to judge a player in 10 minutes. We'll probably know more about these players, boys, next week when obviously we have that final game against Roma about where we stand, whether they're going to get minutes ahead of the season. Uh, Basuma, it's taken an hour and 42 to get to Basuma. Um, good display. He got a real big bear hug from Larice um, after full time. Uh, listen, won a trophy, not bad, is it? First game, already won a trophy for Basuma. A player that you feel is going to be integral to Conte system. We're going to hopefully see more of him to come, of course. Um, Jermaine Defoe presenting the players after the game with the inaugural Walk to Toe Memorial Cup. Cue all the trophy jokes, which I know Jason's taking great pleasure in responding now of a kind of meme that Jason's thrown back at the uh, Spurs army we've seen this week. You'll Hello, never we... see that. Yeah. It's a total <laughs> Memorial Cup. I thought actually, I thought we did it well because we took the trophy and just pretty yeah, much yeah. handed it straight to uh, what's his name to uh, to, um, to Alan Day or Alan Davis. Yeah, it was, it was the right year because we had milked you know, that like we did the uh, what was the one we won and we did make a kitchen big cup when Vincent oh, Jensen yeah, gave yeah, it yeah, big yeah. time. You don't want to start doing that. Yeah, but, no, we, we we took it well. You know, yeah, we didn't that's... even turn around and show it to the no, supporters yeah. or take it over there, did we? So. You know, we're probably, for the, probably for the fear of what we would have got as a reaction, maybe. Probably. Yeah, probably. yeah. Uh, listen, it, listen, it all worked out well. Conte, after the game, said he's happy because he repeats from a tactical aspect. Um, very pleased with the way the club is going. He said, for sure, we can improve because we can see the goal that we can avoid. But I'm delighted with the attitude and the will and the desire of these players. And you can see that with Conte. He really looks so happy at the moment, um, which is always great to see. Final question. We'll give this to Lee. 
Then we're going to hand the reins to Crackers. It's not cheese. It's lots of other themes <laughs> coming your way. Cracks has been on fire tonight. Honestly, I've got to say that, well, the mentions for everybody's going mad, but Cracks in particular, God knows what uh, Derriere is coming towards him in the post in the next couple of days. Um, what would it be the postman delivering that? Lee, this is to you. Uh, Super Ham League says, all the new outfield signings look like they've got potential improvements on last season's equivalent. In your opinion, who is most impactful and who is the least? It's just an opinion because we haven't seen all of them play yet properly. I think the, I think the least impactful, maybe Fraser Forster, uh, and I've ducked that a little bit because the the question was outfield players, but I thought I'd stick him in there. Um, but I think he, he will add something. I think the most impactful will probably be Basuma and Perisic. I think Perisic on the basis of everything that we talked about already. Um, you know the cheese grater. Sorry. Um, because of everything that he brings, um, but also Basuma, because I think that he's going to bring, I don't know, some steel into the midfield, into that central midfield of real bite and rigour and steel. I think Benton Kerr, yourself, Rick, sorry, um, I think you bring, you know, a bit of gall and Thank a bit much. of panache to the to the to the central midfield. Do you know what I mean? And Crack has already named Hoiberg, <laughs> uh, you know, Jason two seasons Spice. ago to Dustman. Um, I think I think the dustman, you know, he he does that. I think with Basumu brings a little bit more at it, doesn't he? Like a bit more bang and a bit more um, not give the ball away, get the ball back. I can see him getting, you know, uh, getting low and getting sliding challenges and winning them cleanly. Does that make sense? That's what I think that I can I can see him doing that. So I think he he have a good impact. I did say in our group, uh, in a WhatsApp group, uh, when we were signing with Charleston. The worry that I've got with Simon Charlison is the pigeon, by the way, the pigeon. Um, the, worry, the, the worry that I've got with Simon Charlison is that he won't actually replace Kane as a number nine. And, and all that happened is he'd just come and either on the left or either on the right yeah, and, yeah. Then, and then maybe yeah. switch it. And that's what's happening, right, in pre-season. I'm not getting, I'm not getting worried about it yet because it's only pre-season and he's manoeuvring his, his, his puzzle pieces. But I think he, he needs to bring Richie in and say, look, you're my number nine as well in some of these big games, so we can go and do the business um, like up top. So, so uh, in other words, we need to be able to give Kane a rest. If he's going to go and get 30 Premier League goals this season, which me and Frankie think that he will, um, and we talked about Kane earlier, all of us think he's going to have a really good season, he needs to have a rest in some of the other games. So, um, I think the biggest impact will be um, Perisic uh, with Basuma as well. I love it. No, that's great. Um, we did mention, obviously, Clement Longley. Decent debut for him. I mean, didn't really have much to deal with when he came on, to be fair. So, listen, we've seen now all of the Spurs signs in action. Fraser Forster, of course, got on as well. Got really booed. Uh, but it was like a pat my villain, wasn't it, on the day four? Yeah, it was a pat my villain. Lovely. He was, of course, he was, he was loving it as well. didn't he? Do you yeah. know what I mean? So I love that Larice was cracking up. Larice was cracking up when, um, when, when obviously they uh, exchanged there for the substitution. But it is that time of the night that we can hand over uh, to Senor Cracknell in Spain. Now, I think I've got to say that, and this is, and Jason will love this, I don't think Jason has Boys, ever before lost... Before you do, I've... Before you do, Rick, sorry, I've got a bow. I can't I can't be part of the shit quiz. I'm really sorry that I can't be part of the shit quiz tonight because of no. the that I've got. But he I've hates got, it that got, much. Got, Look, he's gone. It's not it's not that. It's just like I need I need then to bow where way. I am. So I know, I know. But uh <laughs> Look, no have, problem, have, have good fun, people. Thanks so much. Cheers, Lee. Thank you Lee. so much. The wonderful Lee McQueen leaving us now. This is going to even make it sound worse now. Jason has never lost a... I don't think, Jason, have you ever lost a shit quiz? I don't think so. No. Right. I mean, and I don't think I've ever won one. So well, listen, on fire. Which means I know a lot about shit by the look of it. <laughs> Yeah. I think I think Lee had to go back to his uh, missus. I think, I think he was on manners this evening. He had to go yeah. out. Yeah. And uh, he... Dairy milk it any further uh, to go to go to a little cheese pun. <laughs> well, let's hand over to Rich. Rich, what have you got for us tonight to close the show? All right, okay. Thank you, Rick. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, listen, tonight's comments and everybody getting involved and loving oh, the show and enjoying yeah. it. Mad. Brilliant, absolutely Crazy. brilliant. I love that people love it. That that, that that's just everything to me. Mm. I absolutely love that. So, 
Anyway. No pressure, Rich. Just so you know, 800, 800 people plus watching this. Good luck to okay. them. Okay. Okay. Right. Shoulders back. Go smash it, as the, uh, as the Greeters Guild says. Right. So, we just played Rangers yesterday, Rick. Just played Rangers yesterday, Jace. Who's watching the darts already? He couldn't. I've got the darts on it. He's got, he's got an eye on it. He's got the darts on it. He's got an eye on it. He's got an eye on it. It's not going well at the moment. All right. So we played Glasgow Rangers yesterday, uh, Rick. Yeah. Watch the numbers drop off when the shit quiz starts, by the way. So I'm going to bring you a little shit quiz. This is called Go Go Power Rangers. Okay. <laughs> You remember them in the 90s? <laughs> I used to love them. <laughs> love them. Lee McQueen's gone already. Rick's like, what's going on? Jason's got his head in his hands. This is just the, exactly the reaction I want from the shit quiz. Oh, so, you remember you remember the Power Rangers, didn't you? Yes, no. I, used, I used to have it. I, I, I used to have the actual the thing that you used to hold like that. Believe me, Rich. That's it. Honestly. Go, go, Power Rangers. All right. Here we go. So, I'm. You've got um, five questions. I'm going to give you two names. Each question uh, is two names. One of them is a European opposition, but Glasgow Rangers have played in the past. The other name is a power station somewhere <laughs> in the world. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, come on, come on. These don't write this self, Jace. Come on. I'm actually, I actually think I could win this one. I think I could win this one. Hence, go, go, power, Rangers. Rangers. Love it. You having that, Jace? Let, 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 Jace Get on with, with it. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Okay. Ferenc Vares. Ferenc Vares or Ventanas. Ferenc Varos. Ferenc Varos. Yeah. Or Ventanos. I'm with Jason. I'm with... Yeah. Ferenc Varos is the... It's the football team. Yeah. It's the football team. Correct. Well done. They played them. They're a Hungarian team that they played in 60-61 in the Cup Winners' Cup. Ventanas is a Chilean power station. But you knew that, didn't you? How many megawatts of power per year are they putting out, Jace? <laughs> I don't know, but it's a thousand pound a watt by the sound of it. It's 875. It's a coal powered station. Right. It's one for one, Rick. He, he loves this quiz. Doesn't oh, honestly, he? I'll tell you. Right. It's one Number two. Me. Okay. Ilves or Orot Rabin? Ilves. Ilves. I'm going to say Ilves. Orot Rabin. Which one's the European opposition of Glasgow Rangers? Which one's the power station? I'm going to say Ilves is the European opposition for Rangers. I'll go the other you're one. Sp oh, you're spot on, Rick. Yeah. Rick okay. scores one, it. One, 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 one. Okay. Ilves is the finish for Lynx. They played them in the 86-87 UEFA Cup. And, you know, Ilves is actually an ice hockey team. But they put a football team out and played them in the UEFA Cup. Right, number three. Jason is so perplexed by this that he, he can't. He, he do not know whether to like. I'm watching the like, darts. Sorry, he, he doesn't know whether to be polite and take part in this quiz or watch the darts, does he? So he you should have just gone like uh, arm off with you, Lee. See you later. <laughs> number three. Me Metalist Karkov. <laughs> Damavand or Gotu Itro Tarfelag. Oh my god, I've got clue. Damavand or Gotu Itro Tarfelag. Which one's the power station? Which one's the Rangers opposition in Europe? Gotto, Gotto's the football club. He's only got it right, and he? They're from the Faroe Islands and they played them in the 97 98 Champions League qualifying rounds. Uh, Damavand is an Iranian power plant. I'm surprised you didn't know that, Rick, actually. Oh, I, I, yeah. Gas, I, I, gas power, power plant. 2,868 megawatts they, they throw out. Just, just that you. So it means it's 2 1 a J. So does that mean I've got to get the next one? We, You've got to get the next one. Right, okay, You've got to okay. get the next one. Just right. so you complete this, uh, know your power stations. I've got to give you the facts on it. Number four, Zeta 
o ring house zeta or ring house ring house is the football club i would have gone the other way i would have gone the other way oh it's 2-2 two, two. rick's equalized Ooh. zeta is a Montegranian, uh, Montegranian, yeah, Monte, Montegram, Montegranian, yeah. Anyway, they played Rangers in the 07-08 Champions League qualifiers. Ringhouse is a Swedish nuclear power plant. I thought they were okay. a football club. 2-2. It all come. Oh, honestly, you could cut the tension with a spoon. It's 2-2, two, two, Rick. Here we go. Number five. Your last question. Oh, look, even Kalin's on the end of his uh, on the edge I'm of his seat. seat. Look, he's on still, the edge still of his seven, seat. There's still seven hundred watching this, Rich. You might Is be there? surprised. Oh, though. We've only lost a hundred. Well <laughs> 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 is so shit. Number five, Son La, S O N L A, Son La, or Scoopy. Oh, I would say Son La's the football Scoopy. team. You're going football team for Son La. Mm. Jace, Son La or Scoopy? Scoopy. S H A. I'll go with Ricky. U P A. You're both going with Son La as the yeah. football yeah. team. Yeah. Son La is a Vietnamese power plant oh. powered by hydro, and Scoopy is a Macedonian uh, club. S but they played in the 1819 Champions League qualifier. It's a draw. I've not got a tiebreaker. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know, Jace. That's it. 2-2. Two, two. Desmond's what? on the shit quiz. Thank you very much. Well, Jace, and Sean a... says, this quiz is electric. <laughs> it was a tactical vote mine on the last one because I thought a 2-2, two, two, I can maintain my unbeaten run Which by agreeing with Rick. <laughs> Jason no, remains one. unbeaten Tactical. on the shit quiz. I remain unbeaten. And I don't get well, beat, Richard will take that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did a bit of a Mourinho there, parked the bus and thought I'll just go the safety <laughs> And it's funny because talk about Mourinho, that is where we turn next to next week with Jace, with Rich, with Lee. We'll be back for Roma next week. We have got a midweek show to bring to you. Let me thank our panel for tonight. We've lost Lee McQueen. He's in Spain with Rich somewhere, not together, not far apart, but they're always close by. Jace, thank you so much as always. Really appreciate it, mate. Cheers, mate. Hurry up. Dance, We're going to let Jace go for the Stay dance. Off. Rich, there's been a lot of love, a lot of cheese out there for you tonight. I'm sure you just want to say thanks to everyone again for all the love out there. It's been crazy. <laughs> yeah, tonight. thank you. Thank you, Rick, for inviting me on once Pleasure again on, and, and all the comments. I don't want to keep Jace any longer from the pro celebrity soup juggling underwater and from Azerbaijan that's on uh <laughs> that's probably on Sky Sports somewhere. So Jace, Rick, everybody watching, thank you very much. Thanks for putting up with me. Honestly, so much love out there. Guys, we are back with you during the week and next week with Lee with Rich, with Jace for the Mourinho review. Get Jason's thoughts on Jose Mourinho for one last time. Jason reviewing Jose Mourinho. It doesn't happen often the last one on Spurs. Jace is going for it one more time with Rich, with Lee. From Crackers, from Jace, from Lee, from myself. Guys, thank you so much for all your incredible support. Please keep safe, keep well. And as always...